come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Hey there, thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a weekly movie review podcast that comes at you from a deep, dark basement. If I can get the word embankment, out. an embankment every Saturday. <laughs> deep dark embankment. Deep dark embankment. This is We're a new outside thing. tonight. Hey, we tried doing it from a van once. <laughs> that didn't work rain. out too well. Oh, uh, is that at the drive-in? No, it, the power went out here. We're like, well, oh. what are we gonna do? <laughs> oh no! So we took the computer to out to the van, in. but it turns out there wasn't up. enough juice to. Yeah, there's a reason oh you haven't heard God. that episode. Yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, and the rain's beating down on the top of the atmosphere. I was all for it. Didn't work out. Really funny. Well, I hope. Hope that you've all stuffed yourself with the turkey or the ham or whatever you had for Christmas, and you got everything that was on your list. You know what I had for Christmas? Green slime. Green slime. <laughs> delicious. So, so uh, stay tuned for green slime. That's right. Thank you for joining us for our year end episode. We did this last year. We did a best and worst of the year because and I don't remember it at all. You don't remember your I remember top, what was most uh, disappointing. I I don't. Re- I remember Sean's disappointing. <laughs> was Green Room? Was that Green Room? I think Green Room. We, I think all... Gre- we all picked Green Room. Yeah. Or you may the... have been. You may have flip flopped. I think your second one was Green Room, and your and first the one, The Witch, was the first yeah. one. Yeah. That's right. We all picked the same top two. We either picked the, the Witch or Green Room for the top two. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. All right. So we're going to yeah. do this again because we want you to know that you know outside of the movies that we watch for the Saturday Night Freak Show, we actually yeah. do go out and see new movies. We do. We do. Who would have thought? Mm-hmm. Now, we, we haven't really seen ever. Thank you, Movie Pass. Sometimes we even do it together. We That's do. Right. We have field trips. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, do. we do. What was the last one? Oh, Disaster Artist. Mm-hmm. Disaster Artist was the last film. And then yeah. we went and saw Baby, Baby, Driver. Baby Driver and It. And It. Oh, yeah. and yeah. It. Yeah. I forgot about We've it. We've had a couple of freak show field trips this yeah. year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Should oh, like we? Uh, None of those movies. Man. Should we tell <laughs> the folks what we haven't seen? So if they're expecting to hear something on our list, it's like, well, we haven't gotten around to. Well, I'm, uh, I'm currently holding Dunkirk in my hands, which yeah, I haven't watched haven't yet. seen Dunkirk yeah, yet. Yeah, Colin's the only one that braved Dunkirk, and I think we're all kind of not regretting that we haven't seen it yet. But no. we probably I am should. Now. Have, we probably should have already seen it. it we know is, we need to watch it. Uh, yeah. This is a big yeah. screen um, experience. Also, yeah. Shape of Water. Shape yeah. of Water. Is not yeah. out yeah. around here yet, and, and either, I really want to see that. And there's I, 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 Tanya. Tanya. I really yeah. want to see Tanya. I, Tanya. The um, year-end movies are just like, fuck, why are you not I know, here yet? Because I want to retroactively put Hell or High Water on my list. I do oh my God. That yes, I didn't that see. was it. Last year, you and I, neither one of us saw Hell or High Water. Uh, and all right. After, afterwards, we watched it. We're like, fuck, that, that was my number been, one. Yeah, that was on yeah. my list. Five, yeah. That would have been my number the one movie was incredible. Year. That, yeah. that no, was amazing. Uh, we're going to give you our list tonight, but know that they could very well get blown up in the next, what, two weeks? Oh, yeah, you know, exactly. Just gone, shattered, yeah. out of here. These are all subject to change at any There time. are a That's few, right. I think there's like two locks on my uh, top ten mm-hmm. or top five list that would not go anywhere, even when But the shape of water move. could move them, or the phantom thread. Uh, oh, yeah, phantom thread. Oh, yeah, I probably won't Something see that. Something else coming up. Well, I, Tiny, you said you haven't mm-hmm. seen There's other ones that. that are like, um, the, I'm oh, really looking um, forward to All the money in the world I haven't seen yet. I want to see that. But. I want to see it just for Christopher Plummer. I doubt yeah. it's going to make any of my lists. And it's bright, making a splash, though, man. Bright, bright. Oh, yeah, bright. Yeah. I have a feeling that wouldn't make my list. Well, you don't know. It might it make your most it disappointing. <laughs> it might That's make right. my worst. It could be the worst. worst. Uh, uh, oh, we should have we should have made like a subcategory top three TV because TV. I watch a lot of TV this year. TV yeah. shows. You want to add TV shows to the freak show list? I mean, just for the year end, not for anything else. I mean. That's a whole new ball game show. Well, I'm, yeah. putting, I'm not prepared for that. I, don't think I have I've homework seen I need to do. Yeah. All right. Well, TV I'm sure is too scattered. There's probably we've probably all watched three TV shows this year. And we're like, those are my three. Yeah. Oh, I've like watched, Netflix is no, a TV show. I guarantee you, I've watched a lot more than you guys. Well, there you go. <laughs> We'd be like, well, I saw this one. I like, saw yeah, I saw five episodes of that series yeah. this year. We're like, I watched that series. The I have whole not thing. seen uh, Happy Death Day either. Which no, I have not either. Not either. That would have been my honorable mention. It's not in my top five. I did yeah. see it. Oh, okay. That yeah, would be my Sean's honorable mention. Mm-hmm. Okay. All I have right. a feeling I'd like it, but I don't. I yeah, I don't think it'd be on my list. I just have a feeling. No, I don't think it would be. Yeah. But it is like because my list was already really hard to narrow down. Like, mm. really, top five really is a really lot hard. tighter than a top ten. Yeah. This yeah. was a surprise. Looking back at it, it was like this was a fantastic year. There were better. There were yes. more better movies this year than there were, I think, even last year. Mm-hmm. Last yeah, year and, it was and we to knew that. Like. In spring, we're like, shit, mm. we've already seen a lot of good movies. Yeah. It's just spring. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah, surprisingly, the top half of this year, the January through March, which is usually the fuck you movie season of like terrible movies, was really well loaded this year with right? really great yeah. movies. Mm-hmm. That's why I can't remember most of them because they were so far back. I'm like, was yeah. that this I, year? Mm-hmm. I thought of that um, earlier today. I saw a preview for um, Hostel. Is it Hostel? Hostels? Hostels. 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 Yeah. I Styles. saw a preview for that, and that's not coming out until January. But I thought, wow, that's Oscar Bay, and that's really early mm-hmm. for that movie. Mm-hmm. Which one is that? That's with the... Christian Bale, the Native oh, American right. oh, yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. Which is that out? It's like F- is that out right serious. now, limited, to get in for Oscar um, consideration? Maybe. He's been doing some... Uh, has he? He's been doing some, press as his fat some, his fat Dick Cheney self. Yeah, yeah he has. It's amazing, <laughs> right. and I love it. Because I, I know, love it. But he's yeah. going to be... Like, he's going to die. Good. Yeah. He might die, but he's, he's going to die. just like Dick Cheney. <laughs> like, oh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's done this yo-yo dieting too many times. Probably. He's going to die. Too many times. Like, he did it for American Hustle. He did it for Dick Cheney. He did it the for... Machinist. The Machinist. Yeah. He did it... Nuts. Well, he did The Machinist, and then right after that, he bulked Batman. on all that muscle for Batman Begins. Yeah. So, yeah. like, yeah. He, he's going to die. I'm like, wor- guys, we need to prepare ourselves <laughs> for when Christian Bale dies. I'm legit worried about Christian Yeah, he needs to stop. can't take that. No. It's too much. You know that problem. But you know what? I'm not going to complain about, like, God, those prosthetics look bad. You don't have that problem with him. He's going to be fucking fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's going to be Dick Cheney. Bravo to you, Christian Bale. What's that movie called? Uh, Don't know. Untitled Dick Cheney. Don't know. Dick Dick Cheney, the man who shot me. (laughs) No. No. All right. All right. <laughs> I hope that's what it's called. Uh, it's from we, the point uh, of view of the lawyer. I got a question. Shot. <laughs> are we including uh, Netflix movies on our list? Is Gerald's sure. Game and yeah. Bright oh, yes. and the, all these others? Yeah, okay. we could. I mean, they're movies. That. That's right. So, okay. I think so, so. Even though they're not theatrical, they're not TV movies, then we're saying? No. No. They are movie movies. I mean, Netflix. I mean, one of them may have made it to my list, Colin. Okay. Yeah. So whether yeah, you Net- agree with it or not, it's on there. <laughs> Netflix has become a new entity. I think we just have to include it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, should we kick it off then? We'll start with Sean. Oh, shit. And we'll start with number five. We're just going to go around the table, work our way up, and then you'll hear there our worst movie of the year at the very end. So, Sean, what is your number five? Number five. Best. Wait, is this best or favorite? Uh Favorite. We're doing favorite. Yeah, we're doing favorites. Because you okay. may not think it's... I'll, I'll say for mine personally, I may not think these are the best movies of the year, but they're the ones that I enjoyed One, the most. Yeah. The best ex- yeah. theater going or movie watching they impacted, experience? They impacted me the most. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is what I'm going with. Um, So my number five, I have a tie. Because I just watched a movie last night and it snuck its way in there. Can you do that? Is this legal? This is legal. How's it legal? It's because not. it just said happened it's last not legal. night. <laughs> well, Holly just said it wasn't legal. Fair. Do we, we have a second? Fast and loose it's not here, fair. Colin. We got a second. I'm seconding. It's not fair. You pick one right now. That's right. You pick one. Nope. I'm doing both. No, you can't. Um, too bad. I'm going to say them both, and you're going to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Sean runs the. Oh, because I just watched it last just, night. You're going to get so many comments. That's fine. You're prepared Bring it on, Dom. Give me a tweet storm. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, Dom. Fucking asshole. Uh, all right, so it's, we love you, Dom. <laughs> we mm. we do love you, Dom. Mm-hmm. Uh, please keep listening. Please don't stop listening. <laughs> uh, all right, so it's uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, mm-hmm. tied with Good Time, starring Robert Pattinson. Anybody heard about this movie? Mm-hmm. No, I've no. Not. Wait, is this? Yeah, I think I saw. It's like, um, does it take place in Miami or something? Or I think it's uh, New York, actually. Oh, okay. It is like the neon it's of like New York. It's like a gritty kind of street yes. level. Yeah. It is. I think it's the Nafty Brothers. Uh, Josh and Benny Nafty directed it. Um, Josh wrote it with another guy. It is a very, it's very low budget, very gritty. It started out with uh, Robert Pattinson. Um, he has a um, mentally challenged brother that um, he brings along on a bank robbery. So they rob a bank. What? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, shit goes wrong, and then shit just keeps going wrong. Like it's bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. I'm intrigued. And it's you should be. It's wild because you'll never know where they go next. Huh. Never where they end up. What happens? It's it's kind of crazy. Wow. But it's um, it's I, I think it's it's shot very well. It's got that kind of like you said that gritty grungy kind of feel to it. The neon yeah. lighting of New York and everything, and just the uh, Robert Pattinson does great work in this. Um, the, I am uh, so glad that he has like come into his own as an actor. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that sentence. Yeah. Really, yeah, I'm really happy about that. I'm really yeah. happy to hear that sentence that he's coming. Yeah, to, yeah that's great. Good, Good for him. See, anybody yeah. see what was it? Cosmopolis or the David Cronenberg movie? I did not see no. that. No. I didn't see it either. So why did you I was just up? curious if anybody saw it. Was that a step in the I, right I've, direction? I've seen him in other things. He was in um, uh, Lost City of Z. And I've Remember seen him, oh, seen right, him yeah. other things. Well, 
I don't know about that. The, was, that movie's just heartbreaking. That movie is heartbreaking. The, the, the Rover. But I, have, yeah. I did see that one. Yeah, he, he kind of played like a, he was touched. In the yeah, head. this one yeah. he's just kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's the low level streets of New York and everything. They're not mm-hmm. doing too well. And he kind of thinks he, he just, it's, it's a good movie about like the love. He's fiercely protective of his brother. And something happens to his brother where it's just him trying to help him out through the entire movie. Mm. And like I said, he just makes bad decision after bad decision and just winds up doing some just weird shit. It's funny. It's crazy. It looks good. Um, yeah, it, was, it was definitely a good one. Like I said, I watched it last night and it snuck its way in there. Mm. Um, the other one, mm-hmm. Three Billboards. Number five, Holly. Uh, <laughs> three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. <laughs> It's a tie. You it's can't tie. do it. I'll cover it, Sean. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll cover it. It's still a tie. That's my five. <laughs> All right. No comments about Ebbing, Missouri. I'm not allowed, apparently. <laughs> he gets to talk when uh, when. So Michaela I'll talk when Michaela brings up. Don't All right. All right. Um, my number five has got to be The Disaster Artist, directed by uh, James Franco. Starring James Franco and Dave Franco. I'm not thrilled. <laughs> so <laughs> not, what's your least favorite part about this movie, Holly? I'm not thrilled about Dave Franco, but I immensely enjoyed this movie. Um, it, obviously, based on the book, The Disaster Artist, and that book is based on the making of The Room, uh, Tommy Wiseau's and, infamous... Uh, Greg Sestero's relationship with Tommy yes. before that. Yes, um, the infamous ro- The Room and um, Greg Sestero's relationship with Tommy Wiseau. And it's just... It's such an enjoyable movie. It, it's I like I said, this is not my list of the best movies of the year. Like I wouldn't be like, oh, this should be nominated for every Oscar. But I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. I laughed so hard. It was so much fun to watch, and it was such a. It's such. It's such a touching story. Like if you know anything about Tommy Wiseau and the Room and the Disaster Artist, you know that Greg Sestero has a true love for this man, and that's. That's such a like he, it's such a purity that's so refreshing because it's it's a man that can be easily be made fun of by everyone in the whole fucking world, mm-hmm. and this guy, I swear he's like a fucking angel because he just sees the good in this person, and I think that is so touching, and that really does come through in the movie, um, despite Dave Franco who's a horrible casting choice, but <laughs> James Franco fucking nailed it. He plays Tommy Wiseau. Perfectly well, to the T. That's, the, tea. that's it's the thing perfect. too. Going into that, there was like, I mean, I know he directed it yeah. also, but I mean, there were times, and you know, he's doing a, um, a, you know, an impression of somebody. Sure. Mm-hmm. But there were times when I legitimately like forgot. You think it's time? Yeah, I, yeah, was I know. Watching, you it's know, that he had embodied this guy. I believed it. You know, yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. I'm not like I'm not a fangirl for James Franco by any means. I'm, I've never been like, oh, I got to see the new James Franco movie. Mm-hmm. But I fucking loved this movie, and it, it like. Hand, like, hands down, it was definitely going to be in my top five. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's got that kind it's, of, mm-hmm. uh, it's the, the whatever, behind the scenes Hollywood story. Mm-hmm. Which is, which is I think, almost always enjoyable. Like, yeah. yeah I, I, I love I movies always, about that. Mm-hmm. I always you know? find that enjoyable. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And then to find one that was so ridiculous. Like, even if you don't know how to make a movie, you know that this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the alley down there looks just like the yeah. set up here. Why would you shoot in the alley? This is big Hollywood movie. <laughs> yeah. And Seth Rogen, okay. I'm sorry. Seth Rogen nailed it. It's Sandy who's perfect so casting. Yeah, amazing. it's perfect casting. Yeah. So amazing. This Isn't is sex with her navel. <laughs> the disaster is one of my favorite books, so I was really nervous about the movie and they they nailed it. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. I loved it. So enjoyable. Did we hear the story somewhere that like at like, like was it preview audiences or something didn't believe that this was based on a, a true story because it's so outlandish mm-hmm. and so then did they shoot those like during the credits it shows side by side comparisons oh of scenes from the actual the room yeah. and scenes that was that one they've of my recreated. favorite parts. That was, was that amazing. done after the fact to like yeah you know, i believe so because uh, when i saw the advanced screening of it um they, i mean they had those post credit sequences but the sundance showing did not have the post credits oh, okay, okay. They, they did not have those side by sides yeah. um also when it showed at sundance it was called the masterpiece it was originally oh. called the disaster oh, yeah. then it was called the masterpiece then it was switched back to the disaster i'm really glad they switched so, it back and i think yeah. that's because they had to ground it in something like the book to get people to believe that this was something that really happened yeah. so yeah. and they and they did shave off a lot from the book like a lot oh, but it was sure, mostly yeah. greg's acting but, career you know <laughs> for the most so, part yeah. yeah for the most part there was little bits between him and tommy that i remember succinctly from the book but mm-hmm. um otherwise 
the way they adapted that to a screenplay was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I'm the only one then of the three of you who hasn't read the book, right? Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, I love yeah. the book. Yeah. I've read it multiple great. times. Oh, it's so, one of I the mean, best nonfiction books I've ever read. It really is. Yeah. But not it's knowing wonderful. what's missing. I mean, it's still, you know, I mean, I thought it was, it played you know, perfectly. Yeah, it, yeah, it was really still great. worked like a, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. you mm -hmm. don't feel like you're missing big gaps and something. No, it was just little logic. things. It was just little things that I think like if you hadn't read it, you wouldn't notice. But if you read it, you're just like that maybe touched you in a certain way that you remember it fondly. But otherwise, it was a great adaptation. Where did Tommy Wiseau touch you, huh? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly in the heart. Mostly in the heart. <laughs> a little in the butt. <laughs> a little bit. He wears a lot of belts. I didn't realize he wore that. To hold his butt up to make his butt look so good. That's why he does it. Yeah. I love it. There was a lot of Franco ass in that movie. Mm -hmm. There was. <laughs> but there's a lot of Tommy ass in the room, so it sure. works. I'd rather see Franco ass. Mm -hmm. So it's I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the HGH body. That's what it is, you know. It looks like play doh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does look like somebody tried was like stopped mid mold of yeah. Tommy's body. I, I, I like to think that he Tommy Wiseau's body looks like when you put an action figure in the microwave for a few seconds. Yeah. You know, like, it's like a little, a little melt, just a little melted. Yeah. Like yeah. No, a little doing, mushy. You're working out all the time, but then you get as you get older, like all like you know, Tom yeah. Cruise got that kind of look. Like or if you look at like, like Stallone now, yeah. Yeah. Stallone is really there's muscle there, but all the the skin's not going back. No, if it's like if a high school art class tries to recreate the statue of David. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Things are just a little off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get the general idea, but yeah. it's a little off. Yeah. That's my number five. Disaster artist. Mm -hmm. All right. Michaela. My, five. my number five is three belt boards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Oh. So was mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are the odds? So I have a really bad habit of, like, I get seasonal affective disorder really bad, and the way I treat it is by watching depressing movies. Yeah, and me too. my luck is that every December, January, we get a really sad, depressing movie that, yeah. like, you know, it's like when you're sad and you listen to sad music to make yourself sadder. That's mm -hmm. what these movies are, basically. Like, you know, I think um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is one we've talked about off mic a lot that I, I treat in that way. That's fucking um, depressing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Prisoners is another one I treat in that way. And oh, these, I love that yeah, and all set during winter. Mm -hmm. These all come out during yeah. winter. Yeah. <laughs> As I'm saying, and this movie, like, scratched that same itch for me. Um, the only reason it's not up higher on my list is because the third act takes some weird turns that I was not really fully on board for. Mm -hmm. Um, and this movie, um, don't go into it expecting it to answer the questions you want it to because it's not going to. No. no, it's not going to answer the questions you want it to. But well, you the should. Question Martin is McDonough, what, like who killed the yes. girl? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Martin McDonough yeah. doesn't. He, he wants to look at these people in those moments. Yeah. He yes. doesn't want to give them resolution or anything. But it's just like it's not about resolution. No, it's no. about the circumstances that are happening to these people, and here's at a this look time. at them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's it. It's we're a, not yeah. here and here and we're done. We're out. Yeah. However, I will say, like, go to this movie for the performances, if nothing else. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. It yes. is career best Francis McDormand and Sam Rockwell, and that's that saying, really? and that is saying a lot for both of them. Did she like, win for Fargo? Yes, she did. Yes, she, she did. Yeah, you think I think this is better. One? Oh yeah, yeah. her, so. her and Absolutely. Sam Rockwell will both yeah. be. A, this will yeah. get Sam Rockwell his first Oscar nomination. It will. Really? Like it, I think for sure. he might win. What they do with yeah. Sam Rockwell in that movie? Oh my Like God. I was very surprised how I ended up feeling about him at the end of that movie. Yeah, same. His, his character arc from where is I was. At the it's a journey. It's, it's a yeah. journey, man. Yeah. And like I, he's one of my most beloved actors, and like I think he's someone that's grossly overlooked all the time in Hollywood. So to finally, I really hope that this is his moment because I think he deserves it. But we haven't seen. The, the Darkest Hour yet, the uh, Gary Oldman one. No, I've like, not he, seen that yet. Is oh, yeah. Winston Churchill, we'll see. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Hopefully I'm like, Sam I don't Rockwell know Winston Churchill. I couldn't uh, talk to that. <laughs> if it is Winston I've also noticed in that Darkest Hour trailer, they suspiciously mentioned Dunkirk twice in that trailer. Mm -hmm. That's not an accident. Yeah, 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 There's yeah. no accident there. I was like, hmm, hmm, you're trying to confuse people here. But, um, I, I really wanted this like there was a certain point when I was watching this movie that I was like this is my number one and then that third act happened and it knocked it down a few pegs unfortunately but it's it is brutal and it is visceral and it is an experience uh, it was surprisingly cathartic for me to watch this movie I think I worked through some things with the characters in this movie watching this mm -hmm. uh, I cannot recommend this movie enough I it might be hard to come by now but go out, it, go it, check out this it movie. It just stopped showing around here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like it is now out of theaters here. Yeah. And this is, it's not a murder mystery. That, no. I mean, but that's. No. It, it's a well, crime is, drama, I would say. This guy, uh, Martin McDonough. Martin yeah. McDonough. Mm -hmm. yeah. He did. In Bruges. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He Which wrote and directed. Wrote and directed Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Martin that is McDonough a great, if you is haven't a, seen In Bruges, you yeah. gotta go he's, see uh, that. He's Irish. He's an Irish playwright. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. But yeah, he wrote, uh, wrote and directed In Bruges. And Seven Psychopaths. Seven Psychopaths. Which was good, but it's all right. Also Sam Rockwell. Also right. Sam yeah. 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 Uh, also uh, Colin Farrell from yeah. In Bruges. Mm -hmm. In Bruges, yeah. I still think, is his number one mm -hmm. top of the heap 
Mm-hmm. Even after movie. seeing three billboards yeah. outside, yeah. I mean, I like three billboards more. But Me too. Yeah, I'm yeah. in Bruges yeah. and three billboards. But this this movie, there's like a sincerity to its anger that, like, Prisoners has that same sincerity to yeah. its anger. Um, that is really hard, I think, to capture in film sometimes. Yeah. Um, like that scene she has with the priest. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I was just like, oh. yeah. Yeah. There's just like I don't want to say justification. I think sincerity is a better word mm-hmm. to like the anger in this movie and like. I just can't recommend this movie enough. I wish I could move it up higher, but like I said, that third act just takes some directions. And the ending, I didn't, I wasn't really on board with the ending of the movie, but um, the first two acts, I was, I was fully on board with everything. So that's my number five, mm. Colin. Colin. Five. All right, so I'm going. My <laughs> list is. I had to, no, I had to yell it at least once. <laughs> you should be doing for everybody then. Uh, so my number five, I'm going off of the um, my favorite movie experiences, not yeah. necessarily the best movies, because I mean, I did see Dunkirk and it was you know fantastic, but I think these five are the ones that like while I was sitting there watching them, it was like this is something. And so number five is a movie called The Black Coat's Daughter. <clears throat> um, yeah. It has Emma Roberts in it, uh, Kiernan Sh- Shipka. Shipka, and, uh, oh, God, it's like Lucy Boyn- Boynton. It's a movie about these three girls who um, inhabit a, um, like, it's a girls' college that has closed down for the winter, and for some reason they are all still there over the winter break, you know, over Christmas break, and um, satanic things are afoot. Naturally. Yeah. It's so it was originally called February and I guess it I sat that. on a shelf for like two years. It's the directorial debut of Osgood Perkins. He's Anthony Perkins' uh son. He also did this year um I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House, the oh, Netflix yeah, yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Which I saw and appreciated but didn't like it as much. That one is slowed down to like you know It's slow. Yeah, it's, it's trying to take mm-hmm. time and dilate it, you know, as long as you possibly can in a movie. Uh, the Black Coat's Daughter does something similar to that. So, I mean, if you're going to go into it, it is kind of, it's a slow, uh, well, I hate the term slow burn because everybody uses it. But it is, it's a slow burn. But I think um, it's doing things that will, uh, you know, intellectually engage you during the uh, the mechanics of the plot. Which what? it doesn't really seem like there's a whole lot of plot there. It's like just like this happens, this happens, this happens, and there's some surprises. But it was so... What year does it take place? It takes place, I believe it's present day. Okay. Yeah. Because with the, uh, the title called The Black Coat's Daughter, it makes it feel like it's happening at some different point in time. To me, anyway. It sounds like a period piece. It does. Yeah, yeah and, it does. Yeah. I think the Black Coat's Daughter title comes from like a, a song or a nursery rhyme in it, which has something ultimately to do with uh, the devil. You know, he's the Black Coat. Mm-hmm. I can't. This is the thing. Really, I have to talk around the movie. Sure. Because yeah. to tell you too much, uh, James Remar is in it also. Oh, yeah. he's I really love good. him. And Lauren Holly plays his wife. I haven't uh, seen Lauren. Lauren Holly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So she. It's. I mean, it's. Died on uh, this one. I'm trying to get across that it's really good, but mm-hmm. that you have to have patience with it. But I think if you do, it's rewarding that. because mm-hmm. I guess the type of movie that it ultimately becomes. I haven't seen this angle on it before, and so it was generally like surprising. And I, I was like, I'm digging this. You know, it's like mm-hmm. this is actually paying off for me in a way that you know I was excited about. So I guess that would be. Number five, to shine a little light on the, the little movies, uh, The Black Coat's Daughter, which sat out there. I mean, I guess that's why it's like, did it come out in 2017 or did it come out in 2015, 16? Uh, you know, I don't know. Had, this yeah, is when it officially came out right. in the release. Yeah. Was, uh, we had some iffies with like when, I think when The Witch came the out. The Witch, yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah, it was playing it was the year before as like, a yeah. Sundance. Yeah. 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 And that was like a full year before it came out. But yeah. Yeah. But you should check out The Black Coat's Black Daughter. It sounds I think interesting. All of yeah. you it really does. probably get a kick out mm-hmm. of it. Okay. Number four, Sean. Mm, number four. We're going to keep going with the little movies. Uh, number four for me is a little movie called Logan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tiny movie. Tiny movie called Tiny Logan. You may have Logan. heard of it. A it's small, about an Australian small man. indie actor. <laughs> who's got claws for hands. Um, no, uh, Logan was, um, and I had to remember this one that it came out this year, because um, I still kept going back thinking that Hell or High Water came out this year for some yeah, reason. I'm just uh, like, wait, can I add that to the list? Um, but... <laughs> Sean picks Hollow High Water every, every year. year. Every year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Logan, it's it's our last ride with um, Hugh Jackman, 
Uh, as the character of Wolverine, what who's been ride. playing for 17 years, something, something like that, for a yeah, long it's crazy. time. It doesn't feel that long. No, it doesn't, but I mean, guess... But it, and it does. Right. <laughs> like, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I you go really, back, what, X-Men was like 2002 or something like I that? I think yeah. so. And you look at it, he's so young in that compared to... I know, because like, he, looks, he looks weird in the earlier movies now. I'm just uh-huh. like, I like older Jackman yeah. and the newer ones. And he ones. has that hair that's like deliberately comic book styled. The, yeah. yeah. They were still selling movies in 4x3 and widescreen format. Like, those were the two options yeah. you could get mm-hmm. at the store is when X-Men came out. Um, but it's our last ride with this character. Um, and it's... I mean, how many uh, people have stuck with and played the same character through a set of movies, different sets of movies... For that long, like doesn't happen often. Mm-mm. They get to see that same actor like Mm-mm. portray a character as they. I guess he kind of aged in the original like X Men series, but and then we leap ahead and he's very much older in this movie. We had an answer to this at one. We point. did, didn't we? Because like, we oh, talked about somebody it. who was. Oh, was it like? It was like Peter Cushing or something who played Doctor Frankenstein. Maybe there was an, like, uh, yeah, yeah, there was another. Yeah. There was a more like a seven modern times. Yeah, of it. somebody. But, like, there were kids born when he started playing yeah. Wolverine that were, like, graduating high school by the time Logan came yeah. out, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I was uh, still in high school when first made his appearance as Wolverine. Mm-hmm. So was I. <laughs> like, yeah. Was the director James Mangold? Mm-hmm. <laughs> James Mangold directed this movie. He also directed The Wolverine before this. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the, it's also the first R-rated go-round with Wolverine, which, as a character who has claws for hands and kills people with them... Um, You'd think they they would kind of get to this territory. This a was sooner. the this was the Wolverine we wanted. I mean, it really yeah. was. It sucks. I'm, it had to be the last one yeah. to get the one we deserved. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I, it does suck, but I think we appreciate it much more in that it's his it's his goodbye. Mm-hmm. Um, some of my favorite things about this movie, like um, I've said this before, someone used to describe it. We used to have instead of superhero movies, we used to have movies that had superheroes in them. Right. And yeah. This feels like that kind of movie because it feels like. It feels like a, a Western to me with like the old gunslinger who's been retired Very for much. so many years and somebody's got to find him to get help. Like, you know, uh, like um, uh, Rooster Cogburn and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and it feels like it's his uh, it's his grizzledest. Is that a word? His grizzledest mm-hmm. portrayal of that <laughs> character. <laughs> um and it's it's so good. Um, all, I like the characters in this movie, what they did also with Professor X. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick Stewart like does fantastic as the senile uh, Charles Xavier yeah. in this movie, and Logan's interaction with him was mm-hmm. yeah fantastic. because that's, that's it was so a, delicate and like yeah. intimate the way it was handled yeah you know? very much that like it, it ends up being like a father son thing mm-hmm. and there's so many emotional moments in this movie and to say like to the way we get to say goodbye to this character after having been with him for so long I think they went out on like the highest note they could possibly go yeah for this character. Um, it's fun to see him like he gets to let loose as Wolverine. He actually gets to not necessarily you need to, but he gets to be more violent for the character. Um, but he also gets to be far more emotional than we've ever seen him in any mm-hmm. of the other movies. Um, I like the way it's shot. I like the script. Um, the little girl, they got to play X 24, like their dynamic that they have mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. where she's got to like save him at some point. Um, and just that last realization that he has before he dies in this movie. Um, and I think it's just a really good send off and I really like this movie. So yeah. Logan is my number four for this year. Does this have something, I mean, like, you know, when you look at movies like Logan and, and Deadpool, <clears throat> do you, you know, are we seeing something within the superhero movie genre? I mean, it's like at some point you do reach like, uh, peak superhero movie and then you start to do things like. You know, I mean, I was going to say the parody, but I suppose like is Deadpool. It's like a parody of superhero movies, but it's also functions as a superhero Mm -hmm. movie. It's like this kind of deconstructionist thing. Mm -hmm. And then Logan is also like a deconstructionist superhero movie where it's like in the in this movie, the superheroes are tired of being superheroes. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing like the weight of, uh, you know supposedly the quote unquote real world on you know their shoulders that has mm-hmm. borne down on them for 17 years. I yeah. mean mm-hmm. it's like a really weird place for superhero movies to be. It's like either at this point you know they you know cuz it feels like you can't keep doing what we have been doing throughout right. the Marvel you know I mean right. because that Marvel universe goes back beyond that to the Spider-Mans and the Blades yeah. and the Fantastic Fours and all the movies you don't associate it with the the current the cinematic current one, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know 
But it has been going on for like 20 odd years now, you know? Yeah. It's almost like to see, we see in the character, like maybe it's the weight we kind of take on going through these movies the, 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 of memory or time uh, yeah. that was spent with the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, it's and to see that, like that it is also affecting those characters mm-hmm. because otherwise mm-hmm. we don't get that with um, people playing characters for this long, or even if they trade out actors and everything, but like the characters always mostly like stay the same in these movies forever. How long they go 10 mm-hmm. years or something like that. It's nice to finally see it like actually weighing down on the character like there's some consequence mm-hmm. as to every all the shit he's been through, especially like a character like Wolverine who for sure. heals and has lived for so very long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like and now he's that actually is actually broken. Yeah, yeah, that is a broken, tired mm-hmm. man at mm-hmm. this point after going through all of that. Yeah, it's it nice feels it like reflected. if the Coen Brothers had directed a superhero movie, yeah. this is what they would have yeah. directed. Yeah. Like this is what it the does. Coen Brothers would make out of a yeah. superhero movie. I like it. Looks good. Mm-hmm. Feels good. Mm-hmm. It felt oh I felt a lot of things watching that movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Um mm-hmm. Logan. Logan is is an honorable mention for me. Like it was really hard for me not to put that on my list. Um So Holly. Yeah. <laughs> what's your number four? My number four, um I'm gonna second that big budget with Wonder Woman. All right. I All right. absolutely loved Wonder Woman. It was, and I mean, you guys know me, I'm an avid Marvel fan and I don't have a high. You're wearing a Marvel shirt right now. I am wearing a Marvel <laughs> shirt right now. It's true. Um, she gave Colin Spider-Man socks earlier today. I did. I, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> don't be ashamed. I'm not ashamed at all. I would wear those Spider-Man socks right now. <laughs> yeah, no, if they weren't youth, I, I would be wearing them. <laughs> You um, just stretch them over. It's fine. The legs are small. Uh, um, yeah. That makes me sound like <laughs> for I got circulation really small a little feet. bit. Yeah, you should see They're Colin's for my chicken legs right now. <laughs> They're for Colin's nephew. <laughs> They're for Colin. There were two pairs. Colin's keeping. Yeah. There you go, yeah. Um, so I, I, Wonder Woman just blew me out of the water. Like it just it blew me away. It was so unbelievable to watch a woman superhero and not and then she's like she's the beacon she is she's the wonder woman she's wonder woman she's the woman superhero and the, she finally got her own movie was so impactful to so many people and then watching the movie i i saw this movie in the theater five times and wow every Jesus. time <laughs> i did and every time i was moved emotionally and I don't get that way with superhero movies like I love superhero movies obviously big Marvel fan but they don't all impact me that way and this movie I was brought to tears every single time I watched it no man's land that's all you gotta say no man's land no man's land they uh, she is this she is this beacon for women right now and I don't think it's any coincidence that there's so many big things happening for women the same year that Wonder Woman came out. I think she is a symbol of hope for for pe- for people in general um, because she has this purity about her. She just does in this in this movie. Patty Jenkins just had her be this p- this pure good superhero. She doesn't have an agenda other than what's right, and that is so huge in movies right now. Like we had. We had Captain America Civil War last year that like everyone had their own agenda in that movie, it, whether it was Bucky or whatever the, the agenda was. In this, her only agenda is do what's right. We are here to save people. That's what superheroes do. And it was just so it was so emotional to watch that movie um, because they made her a strong woman. You know, I, I loved the little scenes where she's trying and clothes and then. You know, when she when she tries ice cream for the first time, but then she goes out and kicks ass and it just it shows that women are both. They are strong and they are delicate at the same time. It's just this wonderful contrast that came alive in a movie. Like I I was so scared about I know Michaela and I talked about this. We were terrified. We're like, if this is bad, this is going to be It'll kill me. This is going to kill, me. kill me. Like yeah. it's because it's, obviously it D- can't be. It can't. It, it, can't it literally be. cannot. It can't be bad. Like, D- like, they pretty much everything's right. Was right. Everything movie. was right. Like, like it, D- it had an unfair amount of pressure. <laughs> it, it not only had the pressure of just being a good like female superhero movie, but it had the whole yes, DC franchise on its back. Because like if Wonder Woman had failed, oh then the whole DC like, universe like, would have collapsed. Yeah, Patty Jenkins is going like, woo, Lisa. I didn't fuck it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, Wait, have you guys have looking you at seen, you, Zack uh, Snyder? Yeah, have you seen uh, Justice League yet? 
I've seen the first seen Batman 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I've Doesn't seen look not any better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. According to the rest of it. I'm sorry, Colin. Yeah. I know it's your next movie that you're picking right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so sorry. But I mean, obviously, we, we all know what, what Wonder Woman means to people, means to women. Um, the fact that so many strong women worked on this movie, like, there was this. There was this moment in Hollywood where all these women came out of the woodwork. They're like, no, we want to work on this movie. They had like thousands of people wanting to work on this movie, like primarily women. And it's it just shows how much it meant. And it's so huge. I'm so, so glad that it was as wonderful as it was. I know people will say it's got its problems. You can say that about any movie. I don't give a shit. I loved every second of it. It warmed my heart in ways I didn't know possible. It made me like emotional every single time, and I loved it. And I hope everyone saw it. I think they did. I don't know, but <laughs> it made a lot more, of money. more people saw it than uh, than Justice League. Yeah. Justice League, yeah. or Batman or Superman. I'm yeah. pretty sure it, it did pretty good at the box office. So I'm did, pretty yeah. sure everyone saw Even it worldwide. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's any surprise of why this would be on a top five. Wonder Woman. Well, it's, awesome. it's also like one of those things where you know, as we're talking about superhero movies, like. Did somebody somewhere forget that, like, the appeal, well, I mean, of the original Superman, I think, and mm-hmm. Wonder Woman is, like, and maybe Captain America to a lesser extent than those two, is the true blue superhero. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like exactly. the person who yeah. doesn't have a, like, uh, they have an instinctual idea of what is right and what is wrong. In, yes. You know? mm-hmm. And I guess in both they cases. They are the compass. Like, yeah, Wonder yeah. Woman is true north in this movie. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. Is this the thing that maybe dulls Captain America? You know, I'm saying, I don't know who you are and you're listening mm-hmm. to this. Maybe think Captain America is that person. But is it the thing that maybe dulls Captain America's character is that he's from Earth and kind of came from... You he know, seems more every- persuadable. Yeah, that's the thing. Like he, uh, Captain America, I think is still very much like that human, wholesome, that wholesome like superhero we want him to be. But we saw in Civil War, I was he can, say Civil War, he yeah. can be easily persuaded to do what he needs to do when it's personal to him. But yeah, it's also yeah. still what he thinks is the right thing. What True. his conviction lays because right. t- not in not telling Tony. The kind of the reveal of that movie, like yeah. he thinks it's because what I mean, what comes of him telling Tony what the real thing is mm-hmm. going on? Yeah, he's mm-hmm. got a kind of bias towards his friend here, and he's trying to save him. Yeah, right. But like he thinks that's the best thing to do, and mm-hmm. he sticks with that. Yeah, I but think that's the difference. I, I think the thing is though is that he he went with saving Bucky before he knew that Bucky was good, mm. and that's the point that people have a problem with. Like he dropped everything to save his friend before he knew that his friend should be saved in this situation, and that's where people are like, "Well, you know, if he turned out to be an assassin, mm-hmm. Captain America still just went to save an assassin, you right? Know? Like, yeah, it was, exactly. Yeah, he took that. Yeah. Risk. Wonder Woman, she's like yeah, she's, she said, she's true north, true north, true yeah. north. Yep. and I love that. I loved that. I know, it was, but it's funny that like now it's like when you do that in a superhero movie, like how did Superman lose that position? I'm saying, that yeah, no, should, seriously, how did he? It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it, it doesn't like, make sense. It doesn't. How did he? How are we in a world where Superman's this morally conflicted? Like, it's, what did you do? It's stupid. Yeah. People it's respond dumb. to it's like, like the no. idea of a hero. Yeah. Yeah. Zack you know? Snyder, explain to us, please. Yeah, yeah. Superman. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, like God, Zack Snyder. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. It's like what's Fucking Superman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Throw a yeah. fucking cellophane ass at someone. Mm-hmm. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I need that to happen again. Something. Yeah. I, need that I mean, they should again. do it just to like bring him back to that level. Yeah. Just yeah. be like, I know it seems corny, mm-hmm. but. <laughs> oh, wait. So, wait. You, you saw Justice League. Yeah. Okay, so they are trying to make a little bit of course correction there, but well, of the course. Ship it's is too already little, left too late. You mentioned it. Like it is too late for little, that. He's a little nicer. It is he's, three movies. His costume is. Yeah, it's too late. Like we're not. He still snapped someone's neck. You made your bed, Justice yeah, right. League. Yeah. yeah, this is true. Well, I would say I would say Man of Steel, Steel made the bed. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's no stop back shitting. Back. Pot Kent said that bad course <laughs> you have correction to sleep in that bed. bed. Yeah. yeah. Well, Michaela, what's your Ooh, Michaela, number, number four? four. Michaela. All right, my number four is Baby Driver. Yeah. Um, yeah. I this movie, man, like my heart just like warms thinking about this movie. This movie made me feel cool watching it. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I, like the next day I pulled out my yeah. iPod that's still like 11 years old. Did like, anyone yeah, else? What's I'm up? so cool. I yeah. think when I left the theater, I turned up whatever rock music I was listening to extremely loud and just. I drove excessively just, fast yeah. home. I'm yeah, like, exactly. I feel, you're right. It makes you feel cool. It makes you feel cool. You're right. And like, 
I mean, Edgar Wright has had good movies before. I don't necessarily love all of his movies that he's no. done previous, but this is by far my favorite that he's ever done. Uh, this movie is just like, it's full of heart and it's really smart and it's smooth and it's slick and it's got a precise rhythm to it, mm-hmm. literally. Literally. And, yeah. um, Tequila. But like, it... It makes me so mad that the Fast and the Furious movies make so much money when you could be watching Baby Driver instead. You know, you can get the so, same yeah. kind of thrill out of such a that you movie. get out of those movies that you get out of Baby Driver. Like the cold open of this movie is, I mean, Amazing. it's on it's on YouTube. Go watch it. Like <laughs> like Baby Driver, the like YouTube account uploaded the cold open of this movie because it's so goddamn good. Yeah. Like go watch it. It it is so good. And Edgar Wright, you know. Like this is this is him at his best and this is peak. My my only complaints would be that they're the only reason it's this far down on my list is that uh, the way some of the female characters are drawn are not great and yeah, there's a I lot of Madonna that. horror complex going on that is not good. Um, but they're you know overall like the characters are you know the main characters especially are really well done and mm-hmm. it's it it flows very well and it has a nice rhythm as a movie and it's very comforting and welcoming and it just. Like for being an action heist driving movie, it is. It doesn't hold you at arm's length like a lot of those movies does. Like I love Drive, I love Drive, but that movie keeps you away. Like that movie does not want you to get in. Mm-hmm. Where this movie like welcomes you with open arms, and it's the soundtrack is incredible. I still so listen great. to the soundtrack constantly. So great, and it, this movie just it, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Really, like the, I, it's really hard to describe this movie because it's like an action musical almost. But that also is not describing it right either. Yeah, because I heard that going into <laughs> yeah. it, and I'm like, it's like a new definition of that, right? It's like yeah. it's set to the tempo of a mu- of, right. Like the music that he's playing mm-hmm. sets the tempo of the action, the yeah. editing, mm-hmm. the rhythm mm-hmm. of the movie. Right. Yeah. yeah. But nobody's yeah. really like singing. There's not like musical production. No, no, no. Or no, no. It's, everything's around the music, and more specifically, the like we said, the gun scene, the the, the tequila, tequila scene shootout. Is yeah. It's right like, to the music. It's, yeah. like, it's like high definition Mickey Mousing. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. just want to watch that scene over and over again. Yeah. And I'm like, and, oh, yeah. It's, it's so one great. of those movies where the amount of effort that feels like that went into the craft mm. of it. It's like, oh, how for many sure. times did you have wow. to do that? Plus, they're also doing like, and I think this is maybe a distinction between uh, a lot of the big action set pieces mm-hmm. in the uh, Fast and the Furious mm-hmm. movies versus this, is this does feel pretty much consistently, if I remember right, that this is actual real people doing real stunts. It feels like it. Yeah. It feels or like Fast it. Fast and Furious is you yeah. know, cars driving between you yeah. know, skyscrapers. Shooting right? up in the yeah. air and right. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or there's yeah. a giant wrecking ball coming yeah. down the yeah. street. Yeah. No, this is all ground level. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Watch the special yeah. features, yeah. they're going through everything. There's I was going to say, watch side, the special features. Yeah. Like, oh, you'll get it. Yeah. Next to the real cars that they're driving. Right. Uh, the Ansel Elgort did stunt school for so long, mm-hmm. and Everyone he's great. Did. I knew yeah. nothing about him. I knew he was in like a like the Fault, the Fault in Our Stars. Stars. Like, I, but I had not <laughs> seen it. But I knew he was in, in it. Insurgent and Divergent. He might have been. I think he was. Yeah, he's like a YA guy. Yeah. So yeah. I knew that going into it, but I didn't. But I had not seen anything. No, I, I was fully on board with him as a lead in this movie. I thought he was great. I, I thought I thought he was a good find. He's perfect yeah. casting. Yeah. Feels, and I think the difference, like you said, between uh, this and the Fast and Furious, whenever he feels more, or at least at this point in that series. More vulnerable as a oh, main for sure. character. Yeah, and I think for that sure. helps him a lot. But he holds his own against yeah. Kevin Spacey, Jamie Foxx, and uh, John Hamm. You know, yeah. like he's acting against really practiced people yeah. and he does fine. You yeah. know? And um, has the line I saw in theaters that made me laugh out loud, which was, uh, quit feeding me lines from Monsters Inc. It pisses me yeah. off. <laughs> yes. That shit was funny. That yeah. was funny. Because <laughs> it, it, it has that Edgar Wright like sensibility. Oh, it does. Where, right. If you like Edgar Wright's other stuff, you know, you'll yeah. get that. But out I of think it's stuff. much more polished than his other stuff, even. I think it's more refined and more polished than his previous movies, even. Like, it's, it's so precise. Like, I just think about He's that. He's grown with his movies. He has grown. Yeah. I think about that part where, like, you see baby slam on the brake, shift the gear, hit the play button mm-hmm. all real quick. And the way that is edited is so yeah. smooth. Like nothing is jarring about this movie at all. For being a heist movie, there is not a scene that is jarring. No, it's, it's very it's smoothy. Those, it's those yeah. signature it's it's those signature Edgar Wright moments like that where it's like the, the jump shots. But it's like you said, it's more polished. It's smooth, yeah. Because he did that in like hot fuzz, like right. those, those shots like that. Right, but it, this it just is feels, this feels, is the movie where those shots fit. They make the sense. Most. They, they make, make sense. sense in yeah. And like, if you've ever been to Atlanta or you're from Atlanta, you will recognize every inch of this movie. Like, I've been to Atlanta once for three days, and I was like, I went on that highway and I went up that exit, and like, <laughs> I recognize all of it from the three days I yeah. was there. So, like, you know, this movie was shot all over Atlanta. There's a great Michael Myers joke that to me, like, <laughs> that to me, I was like, He's one I of am, us. That was yeah. Which I almost yeah. wish. I, that's a great trailer piece, but I almost wish they didn't put in yeah. the trailer. I know because I would have. That would have. I would have died. I was actually disappointed with. 
with like the outcome of that because I was I was hoping to see the actual Michael Myers mask. Right. So I appreciated the joke, but at the same time was disappointed with the outcome. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but that is my number four. I really loved it. And I would highly recommend it. Good pick. Yeah. Colin, what, what was your number four? Colin. <laughs> Well, you do it every time. I every didn't. Time, I didn't pick uh, uh, Dunkirk, but uh, I just wanted to piggyback on what we were talking about with Baby Driver. The fact that you know so many of the stunts were done uh, practically mm-hmm. uh, brings me to my years. Was Tom Hardy flying a plane in that movie? God, yes. how many he was. Well, no, he wasn't flying. But a plane, was he in a plane? He was, he was in a plane. The cu- the pilot was behind him. Ooh, nice. But my point being is like the, the, all these other movies. There's a you know grumpy old man Colin. Every year I got to make this fucking. That's thing. all right. I'm with the you. CGI in movies. Like it makes me when I see stuff like Baby Driver or Dunkirk, I go like, well, you know, how would you do this? You probably would employ, you know, there's probably. You know, uh, a camera rig, you know, the, a boom arm attached to the back of the car, right? Or something mm. that they painted think, out yeah. Guy Ritchie style, right? Yep. Mm. He gets those shots where, you know, the, the camera's mounted to the car, but you can't see it. And so I always kind of sit there and go like, well, you'd probably do that CGI. And it's almost like the movie studios themselves have to do this promotional campaign in the documentaries <laughs> that show you, no, no, we actually did this for real. You know, you're, <laughs> yeah. and then you go like shit. But I wish I would have felt that the thrill of you know experiencing these things in the first time. I guess I don't feel the same way now because we're in the era of CGI, and I just assume that's where you know people go first. Sorry about that. That's my the rant. diatribe. <laughs> the diatribe. Uh, what about number four? Okay, so this one might be controversial. Oh. I really liked uh, Darren Aronofsky's mother. So, Ooh. or sorry, mother, mother, mm. or yes, mother. Yes, exclamation point. Mother. <laughs> Does anybody else hear it? Like whenever you hear that title, way. you hear it yeah. like that? Yeah. Of Danzig course. saying Anything just mother. Um, so this is a wild fucking movie. It is, um, I think, one of the Indescribable. boldest moves of a major Hollywood studio, right? That has been released in like modern i mean it's like balls on everyone because what is the benefit of releasing this movie um, well i think paramount thought they saw stuff like uh you know the aforementioned all the pretty things uh that live in the house or i am the pretty thing that lives in the house yeah uh come out on netflix to good notices right uh there was good reviews of that movie and they're like well we're, we can compete with netflix we can put this type of movie out in main you know major theaters but it turns out the audience for something you watch when you're home and the people who pay money to go sit in a theater seat, (laughs) uh, very different audiences, right? (laughs) So this movie confounded, uh, a lot of the people who watched it and, um, Halfway, it was about 20 minutes into the movie because it was sold as a uh, like home invasion horror movie. The most fucked up thing you're going to see this year, you know, kind of which, you know, that marketing harkened back to like 1970s era, uh, the way that they would just kind of um, use uh, hyperbolic, you know, like uh, d- describing a movie that there's no way that the movie can actually uh, live up to this yeah. level of the most intense theatrical experience. Yeah, you yeah. Will like ever the have. Evil Dead movie did that yeah, last, did. you know, it's like the most fucked up or you know, frightening thing you're ever going to see. I'm like, well, that gets my ass you in the seat every die. time. I'm a sucker for this. Um, but it was maybe 20 minutes into this when I started seeing, uh, like reading the movie a different way. And I had the weirdest, most bizarre experience where the part of my brain that was like engaged in the film as a dramatic thing, like disengaged, like I could feel it coming off the fucking, uh, you know, like the, uh, the, the, the chain of the, the, of the, the bike. Right. It's like, and actually disengaged. And I'm like, Oh shit, wait a second. There's something else going on here. It's like that's a symbol, you know? And then this is a symbol. This is allegory. This is am I reading this right? How does this put together? And then so I read like the last hour or so of the movie that way and was like trying to figure out, you know, uh you know, I think I was having a read on what was going on. And then I guess you're left with um if this is kind of like a, a thesis, right? And then you're left to go like, well, I do I agree or disagree with this thesis. I got to tell you, like, I do not share Darren Aronofsky's worldview. You know I mean? Coming off of that movie, I'm like, okay, I get what you're saying to me. And it is, uh, you know, I mean, humanity through his eyes (laughs) is this really just, I mean, like what, you know, like just the 
a plague on the earth, you know? Uh, and uh, it was just like, I didn't agree with his conclusion, but just the experience of sitting there and, and, and going through that, you know, like I admired his technique for doing it. If this makes any sense, it's like, but I can see like, you know, cause then I would read reviews. I mean, I remember reading a Rex Reed review who, you know, I mean, famously <laughs> well, he's right, all yeah. over the, yeah, map he's anyway. all over. but um, I read his review and I'm like, and he's like, I hated this. It's like the worst movie of possibly of all time, you know, and oh, all this Reed. and reading his review. I'm like, you didn't see the movie that I saw. Like you missed it completely. And you, and I think there are like three different ways. Maybe you can read this movie. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm not saying even if you do read it the way I did that, you'd agree with it or like it, you know, or that that's the right way <laughs> or that that's yeah. the right way. Yeah. Because it is like this movie that's open to interpretation. It was just, it was an interesting, you know, I guess I kind of like that the idea that, um, you can use the same cinematic language as another movie. All movies use, you know, the the camera setup, the shot, lighting, the edit, you know, uh, dialogue and music. But that you can actually make something like this that's like, I mean, it is going after something um, allegorical, right? Where you're not actually watching uh, the, the, there's the text and the subtext and then, mm -hmm. the, the, you know. You're not actually watching it for the text. And I think if you do actually watch the story that they're telling you, you will be disappointed by this movie. And it depends on what experience you have with, you know, other things in, in your life. Mm. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, uh, well, I enjoyed it. It was a hard experience. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's unpleasant. Um, but I guess I enjoyed that I but had the opportunity yeah. to see that, ex yeah, to have that experience in a theater because, you know, again, I keep on saying that there's movies from the past that it's, you know, I sit there and watch them and go like, wow, what would it have been like to right. be there when that was new? And, you know, to, to, to have seen that in the theater and say I was there, like I was, I was there and I saw <laughs> mother and I saw mother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, who it would be, it'll be interesting to see if that does, if it lives on for 30 years, just because it's so fucking bizarre. Right. I think or it's one of those movies that in so many years, you know, people will come back to and go like, what the fuck were they thinking in 2017 when they made this movie? And put it out, you know, I'm curious in 20 years, if, if that'll be the case, if we can look and be like, I saw it in theater, mm -hmm. that's fucked up. But that's not to say that, I mean, I agree with everybody who says it's pretentious because it is pretentious as hell. Uh, he wears a scarf now all the time. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't like that, because it is like, it is a filmmaker communicating you on a level that's like, I mean, he is, he it's, is, he's incorrigible it's, now. Like he's just, it's almost, but he's, he's very, jumped the he's shark as a director. Present, he really is. You know is. what I mean? Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. he's, it's, you are getting, it's like, he is sitting there telling you a story. It's not like, you know, Captain America Civil War. I don't know why I keep, we keep going back to that. That it's was good, last that, year. Because that's a good movie. I like Captain America Civil War. But I can't, you know, I don't sense the Russo brothers. It could be anybody, right? Mm -hmm. This is Darren Aronofsky sitting there telling you, the, you know, this thing. And you know it's Darren Aronofsky. But I that's think. a recent development in his career, though. Like, he was not always that kind of a director. Go back and watch Requiem for a Dream. It is not that yeah. same, same kind of, like, beat you over the head storytelling. Well, I got to go back to that one. But, I mean, The Fountain <laughs> feels like it clearly I don't know. I don't know what Swan. The Fountain's about. I don't either. I love that movie. I have no, I cannot tell you what that movie's about, though. No. Like, mm -hmm. no idea. Uh, coming to terms with death. Sure. That's right. like sure, every, probably, that's probably. Every movie a very ever. sad, sad, heartbreaking movie. But that's ever. a long walk yeah. to that conclusion that's in that true. movie. A very yeah. long walk. <laughs> the dying process. It sucks. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to see a Collins dying process movie. I want to know what that's like. Make that movie. Jacob's Ladder, probably. <laughs> All, right. All right. No, All I right. got another one. But yeah, it kind of would be be like Jacob's Ladder. I have an idea. But uh, yeah. All right. So Sean, number three. Oh, number three. Uh, number three. Where am I at here? Uh, ooh, do I switch them? Do I not? Uh, all right. Number three. Lady Bird, written and directed by Greta Gerwig. Um, I had a really good time watching this movie. Um, this year, it felt like I don't know. It was refreshing to see a movie. Um, I think in this simplicity. Um. It's very well written. It's a coming of age story. It stars uh, Zersha Ronan. Um, Zersha? Zersha. Yeah. Zersha. Zersha. Zersha Ronan. Zersha. Zersha. Yeah, Zersha. Yep. 
It's spelled S A O I R S E somewhere mm-hmm. like that. But it's Zersha Ronan. She's a really good actress. She's mm-hmm. very good yeah. actress. Um, and she's so far. I mean, what's the biggest budget movie that she's done? Hannah. I don't know. The Golden Compass. Oh, oh was she shit. in the Golden Compass? Oh shit! You got probably it. that. Yeah. Also, right like the most. The movie that lost the most that money. Tanks I'm the yeah, most, that tanks yeah. the most. Yeah, the most of it. Yeah, because Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig were also in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But oh, she like uh, Mia <laughs> Wa- Wasikowska. Wait, who was that? Who? They weren't. Who? who yeah, was they were in the invasion. invasion. That yeah. was Nicole Kidman, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was Daniel Rachel. Craig and yeah. Rachel Wise and Daniel Craig were in Dreamhouse, right? Dreamhouse. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Dreamhouse yeah. and the invasion yeah. mixed up. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, like, here's the link between all the movies we were talking about. There we go. Didn't Daniel Craig steal uh, Rachel Weisz away from Darren Aronofsky? <laughs> it it kind of seems like yes. it. No, yeah. he, but yes, he did. He did. Like, they, were two, they were yes. married. Yes, he did. And then he stole her away. Yeah. And now yeah. they're kind of, they're together. And yeah. I don't know if they're married, but. Oh my God, it's a small yeah, town. It's a small town. But uh, she's like, uh, I mean, she is, I mean, we got to give credit to this woman. I mean, she is a, she who? makes yeah, Saoirse who? Ronan. Oh, Saoirse okay. Ronan, yes, yeah. yeah. She makes, I think, very smart uh, career choices. I think so too. Yeah, I like think so too. Mia Wasikowska, I think, is the other one who, like, I mean, aside from the mm. Alice in Wonderland movie, what's she done lately? <laughs> who Mia? Mia Wasikowska? Yeah, who's, who's, yeah. Who's was... Mia Wasikowska? Oh, she was in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. She was in um, uh, Crimson the, Peak. Yeah, Crimson Peak. Was that the uh, last thing that she did? No, she did another. Wait, things. she didn't... and oh, she Stro- did uh, Stoker and um, Lily James Wes Anderson. Uh, right? She's done a lot of mm-hmm. indie stuff too. She did um, Only Lovers Left Alive, and she did Jane right. Eyre, and she's been a lot of okay. stuff. Grand Budapest yeah. Hotel. Gotcha. Yeah, but they both oh, yeah, of them right. seem to be. I mean, I guess they're maybe the two of maybe the same age group that I'm like yeah. watching their careers because they haven't succumbed to like, hey, you got to be in the new. Marvel superhero movie. That's very like, true. I'm, Not I'm yet. guessing that they've turned down those. I'm hoping that they've turned so. down those. I would uh, guess so. Because everyone yeah. who makes like one good independent movie, they're like Marvel comes in and is just like, oh, you should be in all yeah. this and everything. Oh, yeah. Because Colin Trevorrow made like what? One one movie before uh-huh. that? Safety yeah. Not Guaranteed. And they're like, mm-hmm. you will direct everything. Mm-hmm. And, I love you know, Safety Not Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it. Is it good? I love that It's movie. good. Yeah, but where it's really was good. Sebastian Stan before Captain America? I mean, I'm sure he did like he did some kind of... Yeah, he did smaller things. The Covenant. Like, okay. Oh, my God. Right. Never that mind. That fucking movie will never die. <laughs> no, it won't. It coming. won't. <laughs> he, Jesus. He hates, he hates his filmography. He's made jokes about it. <laughs> I, I mean, I bet. Like, he came into a, his own a better version yeah. of his career lately. Yeah. I think he's afforded more opportunities. I saw a video of... Logan Lucky. He was. I saw a video of him at a convention with like a panel of like Chris Evans and whoever else. And someone asked like a deep question about like character development. And he was like, according to my filmography, I'm going to let someone else take this question. (laughs) Like, he knows. It's pretty funny. Hey, you got to be a working actor, I suppose, before you get into the stuff. I mean, he's doing good now. Fucking I, Tanya looks awesome. He's, yeah, that he. So he was able to graduate to like prestige art. He has graduated into doing, uh, being able to choose what he wants to do. Let's put Mm -hmm. it that way. Not having to do anything. That's why it's harder for Saoirse Ronan, I think, is, you know, if she's doing those films, uh, you know. Le- Constantly? It, yeah. And not, and, yeah. yeah. I respect her for that. Though. I do, That's too. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. I respect it because it's a harder life. Yeah. But it's more, like, uh, prestigious, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, you're a real new, actor, yeah. you know. She's the new uh, Zoe Kazan. If anyone oh yeah, is. she. Oh my God, she totally is. She's the new Zoe Kazan. No, I remember seeing her in Lovely, Lovely Bones, and I was like, "This girl's gonna do all right." I hated that movie, but I like her. She, yeah, yeah she's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's great in this movie. Um, it's very, it's a very simple story. Like I said, it's coming of age. Um, but I think it's just very uh, simply written. Um, and I think it comes alive uh, when that script is given to the actors in this movie. It's got Zersha Ronan. It's got Laurie Metcalf. It's got, I don't know who plays the father. It's, I think it's, his name is Terry something. Um, but he's also very good in this movie. Um, just kind of just the weird, um, young person, like the relationships they have with like boyfriends and girlfriends and everything. And like, there's a whole level of this movie that I can't relate to as far as like daughters who have a relationship with their mother, which, um, I, I always had like a kind of, it was a testy relationship with my mother. Back in the day, so I relate to some aspects of it, but like I'm sure there's a whole level to this movie that I can't understand that whole dynamic. But seeing the way it's portrayed between Laurie Metcalf and Zersha Ronan, like I I got it and I understood like the angst and the fighting between them. And watching Laurie Metcalf's character, like I understood having a kid now, like I understood like where she was coming from. Like there's a whole aspect to it. She was great in it. She was great. She really was. But there's a whole aspect of like I get. 
what she's feeling as a parent towards her daughter in this. And I think um, everything just came together. Like uh, Lucas, Luke Evans? Is that his name? No. Lucas Hedges. Lucas Hedges. <laughs> That's his name. Luke Evans. That's a different guy. I was guy. like, Luke Evans is in this no, what? No. Uh, like, Lucas Hedges, who was no, in uh, Manchester. Uh, <laughs> Manchester by Sea. Yeah. Oh, God. That movie. Um, I saw, wait, yeah. what was the other? Oh, he was also in Three Billboards. Oh, yeah, he, was, he yeah. was. He was. So I saw a lot of Lucas Hedges this uh, over this year. <laughs> um, he's very good as her, uh, uh, kind of like her first boyfriend. Um, uh, I think it's uh, uh, Beanie. Her last name's different. Jonah Hill's sister. Um, it's Beanie something. And she's very. She's the best friend of Zersha Ronan in this. They go to a Catholic school. Um, if is that it, where it's set primarily? Because I'm, I'm like, is this a period film? No, no, no. no. It's, it's modern like, day. It's modern day. It's, it's modern just day. like, you know, uh, they're on the wrong side of the tracks, if you will. Yeah. Um, but she goes to a Catholic school and she's got her friends in that. And, um, oh, what the fuck was I just going to say? Uh, no. Oh, if the first scene uh, together with Zersha Ronan and Laurie Metcalf doesn't hook you in and just make you laugh and kind of love this movie, uh, the you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know that, that scene. The was, conversation in the car. That was my favorite scene. And how it ends. Yeah. Is pretty fucking great. That was my favorite scene in the movie. That was wonderful. But it's just, it's a f- really fun character movie. And it draws you in and it, you laugh with these is characters. Is it fun, Sean? It's not, uh, I had, <laughs> <I'll explain. laughs> no, it's not, I mean, yeah, from the level, I'm like, I'm only, I'm only asking because I mean, I guess in my understanding of it, it's a, it's a, is it a heavy drama? It's no, a dramatic. No, 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 it's not heavy. heavy. No, no, no. Um, I had fun with it. Okay. Um, uh, I don't think, maybe I think there, you can bring, I think you can bring issues to the movie that you can work out and seeing the relationships in this movie. And I think that can make it heavier than it seems, but no, it wasn't. Uh, oh, it's touching. It's, it's, it's very it's touching. touching movie. It's not it's, like it's not heavy. It's in any. It's not heavy on either end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. But it's also it's just, just. It's. I think it's just satisfying to watch these characters, mm-hmm. and it feels like they they feel like real people. It feels, that's that's the greatest. It thing. feels like you're watching like a story of not even it's like a story, just a life of real people. It does. Like, it feels yeah. like real people. Greta Gerwig. Like um, what's her filmography? I'm not familiar. Uh, with. See, I mean, I know I know she is by sight, but. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna look it up Cause real she, quick. Is she like? I mean, would you consider her coming from like the Mumblecore uh, crew of? Uh, it feels like mm-hmm. it. Whether there's an actual, uh, whether she actually like does. the Joel Schwan, 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 uh, Schwan, Joel Schwanberg, <laughs> Schwanberg, uh, you know, uh, set or whatever. I, I feel like they're. I feel like they all know each other. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, okay. Whether she is or so not. So it's basically it's like a low tech, you know, character driven, highly character mm-hmm. driven. It's all character. Yeah. Very okay. personal. All character. It's, very yeah. low tech, which I appreciate in a in a glut of summer movies and all the oh, shit for we sure. get now. How everything's big temple and franchise. It's a breath of fresh air, mm-hmm. which is very nice. But it's not just like. It's not just compared to those big movies. On its own, it is. It's a very simple, character-driven movie. I like watching these people interact with each other, and I like the actors they got to portray these characters. Um, but if Ooh. I'm the kind of person that like I hear coming of age, I'm really like, oh god, I've seen it all. Like I don't need to yeah, see any more coming wanna, of age. And I don't want to like, like just like pin it down to that. Like I hear that, and I'm like, I'm I'm out. Like right. I've seen and it I, all. I've I don't need to see any more white people coming of age. I really don't like. I mean, they are all white. You know, ex- that's the problem. Say, yeah, that. yeah, exactly. Like I've seen that. enough um, white people come of age in my lifetime that I don't need. I that's why I haven't seen it yet because I don't need. <laughs> no, I don't feel. No, like I am I need a white person it. and I have come of age, and that's <laughs> all I needed. No, here's the thing. There is one black dude in this movie. And I wanted resolve for his storyline so desperately, and that was the only thing that I didn't get. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just like you know, like I like it feels like boyhood all over again. You know, to me, like I'm like I get boyhood is probably like I saw it eventually. I saw that boyhood. Feels, oh yeah, that but like, like it'd be heavier. But I was like, you know, yeah, boyhood was a coming of age movie. But I saw it because I was interested in the process of how it was made. Yeah, yeah. Not because I, I was into everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, but like this movie doesn't have that going for it. So I'm just like, why would I watch it? That's kind of my thought on it. Is like it's it's because you like. I mean, it's because you like the actors in this movie, and I mm-hmm. think you just like. I mean, you like seeing these characters do the things they do, say the things they say. There are certain movies where I just, I like watching an actor work or a character who feels like a real person move through this story. And I, I enjoy just like just watching those characters act and be those characters. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the big draw for this movie. Like, I don't think you will find, it's not special in that they go through something that like thousands of other people haven't gone through. 
but it's it's just nice to. It's everything see that, that a seventeen year old girl would go through. Right, it really is, and maybe and that might not be enough to bring you to the movie, but I think that the writing does. I think the I think it's the writing and the actors that they get in this movie is like the main drawing point. Um, the dialogue is also, I think, pretty good. Uh, the dialogues, uh, the script is also another uh, good thing. If nothing else, the situations may seem familiar, but I like the dialogue going through it. I like, um, yeah, I, re- I really enjoyed it. It felt really good to watch. Just felt nice to watch a movie that didn't feel overly complicated, have anything riding on it, have anything from 40 years ago that we I have to remember. I understand that. I have that attachment to a different movie on my list, so I understand that right. feeling entirely. But I think you can strip all those things away and still have a great appreciation for this movie. Mm-hmm. I think it's just okay. nice to see characters fully in their characters and just to watch them live in that world. And that's okay. why... Lady Bird's my number three. All right. Number three, Lady Bird from Sean, from Holly. I thought you were just calling me Lady Bird. <laughs> <laughs> number yeah, three, number three Lady, Lady Bird. Bird. <laughs> On from you. Um, I'm going to make mine quick because we've already talked about it. My number three is Three Billboards of Ebbing, Missouri. Oh. Holy shit. So yeah. I need to see this movie. Is I told you. You haven't this seen it yet? It's no, I haven't seen it yet. I told you it was a oh, theater God. movie. This is my hell or it, high water, right? It is. It, it, it is. Like, I think Holly yeah. told you it was a theater movie, too. Yeah, it's been I did. It made me know. feel things. God damn it. I told you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I loved this movie so much. It I was, saw that trailer. Oh. Sorry, go no, ahead. No, no, you're fine, you're fine, you're but fine. the R-rated trailer. Like, you yeah, can see the, the red band the, trailer yeah, is yeah, better. Yeah, the red yeah. band trailer gives you an idea of uh, <laughs> Francis McDormand's character, why you should see this movie, I think. Why, why? she deserves oh. an Oscar, yeah. Don't say why when she's coming here calling you a fuckhead. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Her character is yeah. just... Oh, outstanding. I'm still not sure why she wears the jumpsuit through the entire movie, but that's uh, maybe my biggest question with the movie. You know, yeah, I think that's my biggest question, too. You know, like, <laughs> right, and if that's, that's my biggest, biggest question, question that's then that's why fine. Why does McCready wear a sombrero? That's, I mean, that's why does true. he? It's a good question, you, go. you know? Um, no, we haven't really it's talked. It's too sunny. We haven't really talked about it a whole lot yet, um, but... Frances McDormand and Woody Harrelson's relationship in this movie oh, is nice. un... It's just... It hurts me. <laughs> it's like, it makes so you feel things I don't want to feel. It's so emotional in this way that I did not expect at all. I, I just had no idea. It, the way... I mean, Woody Harrelson plays a wonderful character. I, it's not that his performance is bad or anything. It's just there... It wasn't, a, it wasn't an impressive performance that needed to be done. He needed to play this character, and he did it well, and it was great. But, but he's not the focus character of this movie, and but the way he, his character plays with Francis McDormand's character, and it's just so touching. It's 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 this whole new level that I I didn't really realize. I I've never I don't know if I've ever really seen a, a relationship like this in a movie before. It was really unbelievable. It was really impressive. Um, the way it was written was just gorgeous. Um, and then obviously Sam Rockwell just took it to a whole new level. Um, I know there was a lot of controversy with his character in this movie, um, but it's an intense character. And not necessarily he's always intense, but it's an intense kind of character. And he just... In, mm, maybe in, in that you have intense feelings for him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or about his character. Yes. It goes a lot of different ways. You know? It does. Yeah. It does. And it's, it just and it keeps moving the needle. Like I said, the mo- needle moves all over the place with that It's character. like, really you, you know how Game of Thrones... I was just going to say, it's like Game of yeah, Thrones. Your allegiance yes. switches all the time. Yeah, That's like, how oh, this movie yes. is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what it's yeah. like. That's so exactly are, what it's like. You're saying they're like three-dimensional characters. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes they the are way gone. most movies should be written. Yes. It's, okay. it's wonderful. The, they have thoughts oh, and they yeah. change over time. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah, I won't say much more about it. I just got to say that this... this screen, yeah, you should go this, into this movie knowing nothing. This screenplay is wonderful. It's Playwrights this, should write more movies. Yes, mm-hmm. it's absolutely wonderful. I, these characters are written so beautifully, and the story is such a gripping story. Like, I mean... It, you, it's not like we said. It's not like a murder mystery. It's not a who done it, but it does involve a murder, and it's just, it's it's this emotional journey, and it's so it's so gripping. Um, everyone should see this movie. I think it's fantastic. I I didn't I didn't even have the problems with it that Michaela brought up earlier. I I I was all for the the third act. I I can see where you would find problems with it, but. I was on board the whole thing. I right. loved this movie. And Jonathan Hawks is in this movie. Yes, he yeah, is. he is. Which is automatic yes, he is. plus any movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, is he? Wait, am I thinking of the right guy from from Dust Till Dawn? Is that John Hawks? No. no uh, uh, 
Shit, what is that guy's name? What is he in? What's He's in everything. What was the Jennifer Lawrence movie, the first movie she did? Uh, Winter's Bone. Winter's Bone. Bone. She's in, he's in that. that. Oh, and he's Peter in, Dinklage is in this. Peter yeah. Dinklage is in this movie. Yep. Yeah. 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 He's in something else right now, too. Sorry, I'm getting my... But no, don't go to go, don't go Hawks, see it for right, him. Or, you no, listen. Go see it. Jonathan it. Hawks is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go see it for, for Sam Rockwell, if anything. He was oh, an God, identity. Yes. God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if he anything, was. I just love right. Sam Rockwell even more for this movie. <laughs> oh, come yeah. on, Sam Rockwell. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's that's my, uh, mm-hmm. that's my number three. Number mm-hmm. three. All yep. right. Michaela. My number three is The Disaster Artist. Oh. This movie, like, I highly touched on a lot of the, the same sentiments I had before, but, like, this movie is lovable and it's full of heart in a way that you don't get with small budget movies. Like, I, I look back on the past year or two, we've had movies, and, like, a lot of the movies that I've had fun with or that made me feel good were, like, huge budget, large spectrum movies. And this movie's scale is very small and its budget's very small. It's handheld shot. Um, and it just. It is a movie that makes you feel good. It's a faithful adaptation of his of Greg Sotero's book. Um, it's surprisingly poignant, and it's a really good palate cleanser for like all these giant crunchy blockbusters we've had all this year. That I feel like crunchy just is a good description. Crunchy, like <laughs> they like they they stress me out sometimes. The amount of like blockbusters we have give me anxiety sometimes because I just want something small scale that isn't so overwhelming and so sensory overloaded. And this movie is very narrow in its scope and in its sensory experience. <laughs> But they this want to make big Hollywood movie. <laughs> Never in a million years, but after that? But oh, after yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> this movie brings us a lot closer to Tommy Wiseau, but like Holly emphasized earlier, he is not the only punchline. Mm-hmm. This movie so easily could have just been yes. bashing Tommy, and it's they, not. They love Tommy. They love they him. They love they the love room. Him. Well, to give you an example, like... There was a documentary that was supposed to come out this year called Room Full of Spoons that was a uh, behind the scenes making of of the room that supposedly Don't need took, that anymore. Well, it supposedly took a lot of the footage from the cameras that Tommy had on set uh. that were filming everything, but Tommy sued them and blocked them from releasing it because it painted him in a bad light. Mm-hmm. Whereas this, you know, James Franco is very good friends with Tommy and this movie I mean, it does show some negative sides to him, but not to the extent the book goes into. Yeah, but Jesus, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, even watching that movie, I was like, if I was this guy, mm-hmm. you know, to see yourself mm-hmm. put up there, I mean, you are kind of an object mm-hmm. of ridicule because yeah. that's part of what our fun is watching mm-hmm. the movie is that this guy's like a fucking alien. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it does mm-hmm. humanize him, which I suppose yeah. is. Tommy but- signed off on this movie. He signed off on that's it. A brave well, that's what. But I don't well, know if that's because say. is he so unaware? I mean, is he so detached uh, from? He's himself very good friends with James Franco. Yeah, him but, and James Franco are friends. Yeah, so, but I mean, he has to know. have seen this movie. I mean, like, no, well, he's was, seen it. If that he's, was you, though, uh, yeah. well, I, I think it's. I think it's because like Greg Sestero has as has this has this love for Tommy Wiseau and this movie really brought that spirit to everyone there's only like two to three instances where he's made out like an asshole and they make it look like an isolated incident which it was not it was if not. you read the book it was not an isolated incident he like, was like, he like was, the part oh. where you know that he calls out the girl's body and like the pimples on her on her shoulder or whatever that was not an isolated incident like they make it look like in the movie in the book mm-hmm. it was not so that's the thing is that they pared down those negative things mm-hmm. to one scene in the movie when mm-hmm. in the book it was a throughout the book thing. Yeah. They even flesh it out when he's kind of just jealous of things that Greg is doing mm-hmm. throughout the movie. Um, I was looking at uh, Franco did an interview where he talked about uh, Tommy because somebody asked him the question, mm-hmm. did like, how, what did Tommy think of this movie? And I think it was at the where did they premiere? Was it Can? Yeah. Um, Con Can. Um, Tommy had not seen the movie <laughs> mm-hmm. up till that point. Mm-hmm. And so the movie ends and everything and they have to get up on stage and um, it may not have been can. It may have been something else because um, they were taking questions from the audience. It went to It got a standing ovation at Sundance. Yeah. It, it was very well received. At Wherever it was, yeah. it was the first time Tommy had seen the movie. Mm-hmm. So they had screened it and completed and everything. And Franco was kind of freaking out that Tommy had not seen the movie and he didn't know how he felt. Mm-hmm. And so they were taking questions from the audience and everything. And uh, the guy who played uh, the, the guy who played the original, like Chris R., Oh, who's yeah, yeah, like, giving okay. my fucking money, mm-hmm. Denny, and everything. Like he asked the question, and everything, and um, Franco was like, "Oh shit, you, Chris, are come on up on stage and everything." And he saw that Tommy was in the audience and everything. He's like, "All right, Tommy, come on up and everything." And he was so nervous that he because he had no Franco. Co- you're saying. Franco was so nervous because he couldn't read Tommy and didn't know how he felt about <laughs> right. this movie. You never know what that guy. You never know what that guy. Never seen it. And he asked, so he's like, "All right, Tommy, what do you think?" And Tommy. Like Blanche's for a second, he's like, it's like, 
I approve of like 99.9 percent of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but you know, a few things. Maybe check the lighting in the beginning of yeah, the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the lighting, might yeah. Be. The light, yeah. But the lighting's now, a little. Uh, but you and think then they about pointed this. out that he was wearing sunglasses, and he's like, yeah. "Oh yeah." <laughs> but you think about this, right? Like now, upon reflection, it's like that reaction is what you would expect of a guy who, according to the movie, has that uh, performance of a streetcar named Desire. Yep. Right where he he wants to <laughs> like he Brando realized, and yeah, James Dean. Yeah. You have to get out there and just completely let mm-hmm. yourself be exposed. Yeah. In a way, and come what may. And I mean, I guess in the end, mm-hmm. this has worked out well for him because now the room, uh, thanks to uh, Fathom Events, is, is getting a wide release for the yeah. first time ever. First time ever. Yeah. We I, all need to the road trip to go as, to as someone who has loved the room for many years and has like it used to be like a secret password sort of thing where you'd be like if you've seen the room and if you've met mm-hmm. someone else yeah. you're like oh my god to now see it blowing up now to like popular. a mainstream thing is a little heartbreaking to me because I'm like oh great this thing yeah. that I love is being taken away from yeah. me yeah. but at the same time it's good to know that Tommy's dream is being realized like I feel happy for him you yeah. know yeah, on yeah, that scale tweet recent like 14 years your dream can come true he oh he so if you don't sweet. follow him on social media follow him on all social it's incredible it's Incredible, you guys! He, no, he goes live on Instagram. He goes live. Amazing. He, uh, amazing. Today he posted a picture of him signing um, a Red Bull can for a fan, and then he tagged Red Bull and it said, "Sponsor me." <laughs> things like that. You yeah. see things like that all the time. So yeah. definitely follow and him on social should. media. He goes the, live. This movie though is handled with a surprising level of delicacy that I did yeah. not expect. Like the book was something that you know three out of four of us have read, and like I think it's one of the best in that nonfiction books I've ever it read. Is, yeah. And I was really worried, you know, especially hearing if the t- uh, the title changes and stuff. I was worried that it was going to be a huge departure from the book, and they would kind of twist it to be like. Um, like a producer's situation where like they were trying mm-hmm. to pull one over on Hollywood, which mm-hmm. was not the case at all. Right. Um, but you know, it truly comes from a place of love and you can feel the love that the Francos have for this movie. You really can. Um, even though Dave Franco's fake beard is the worst in cinema history. It's the ever worst. It's the worst thing ever. It, like I like that takes this movie down a few pegs just for that fake beard because it's so bad. It's bad. But everything else about this movie is so good. It's mm-hmm. so fun. I've never laughed so hard out loud in oh a theater. Oh my god! Yeah, it's it's the next it's the next best theater experience you'll have to seeing the room in an interactive showing. And if you've <laughs> not gone to an interactive showing of the room, go. You get to throw By spoons at the screen. You, spoons you throw spoons. People play football. football. You count the the oh highs in the movie. Usually, <laughs> it's great. Go see the room in an interactive showing. Probably but, at the music box. Yeah. The music box does them regularly. There are several. If you get lucky, sometimes Tommy or Greg will show up for them. Um, most other people from the room, really enough, do not capitalize on this. <laughs> sure. you, Understandable. Yeah. Um, but those two do show up every once in a while. They have another movie coming out next year that I'm really looking Best forward friends? to. Best Friends. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so, it's going to be the last Jedi of the uh, the room. I hope so. not. Oh, I hope not. But it, it might be. Who knows? Never but that know. is my number three. But that might, make it, that might make it great. Uh, yeah. Uh, Colin. All right, my number three, I guess, continuing the theme of, uh, well, I suppose, uh, writing, right? We were talking about... Like, yeah, writing. Like, yeah, yeah. Like writing is a ago. thing. <laughs> yeah, an hour ago, we were talking <laughs> about writing. Right. Sure. Um, I think uh, I had such a good time watching this film, and, uh, you know, uh, it's Wind River, um, the nice. Taylor Sheridan written and directed movie. Uh Taylor Sheridan's a guy, I think he was an actor for he a while. He was an actor was, for a yeah. long time. Yeah. And then he wrote uh, Sicario, mm-hmm. which uh, upon seeing that movie, like that became, I think I say it, saw it late. I didn't see it in theater. No, because I had like, to try and convince all you motherfuckers that yeah. this was a movie to see. Yeah, because it looked like a eh, standard DEA drug agent thing. And then when you see it, it was the Denny Villeneuve yeah. and uh, Roger Deakins. Before and, we knew of yeah, Denny yeah, Villeneuve. Before, so now, now <laughs> right. if you haven't seen this movie, Sicario, oh my uh, God. get your ass back in time. And go see go. It. Uh, Villeneuve and Deakins did Blade Runner 2049 this year, which is also you know probably an honorable mention. That, probably, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not including on enough the list, in there, yeah. That was a really good movie. But um, this one, I had a better experience with... Um, it reunites two Avengers, believe it or not. Oh, it uh, does. It Jeremy does. Renner and uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Yep. Um, but the, I think what I appreciated about it was, and I mean, I guess, you know, there's like a common theme going through some of the things that we chose for our third movie. Like, none of these are the big, uh, you know, um, expensive Hollywood blockbusters. We're all kind of going, I think, this third level. It's all been talking about these are character Third dramas, place, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, who knows where it goes from here? I don't yeah, know. I don't, we yeah. haven't talked about this beforehand. I think um, yeah, it'll be surprising, maybe. But 
It's a murder mystery, which intrigues. Like, I just love these things when they're done right. By the way, Manhunter, if you haven't seen, or not Manhunter, Mindhunter, the oh my David God, Fincher yes. directed I Netflix show. Mindhunter, yeah. you so see great. This. So, I mean, that kind of stuff, like, you know, I'm in, you know, whenever yeah. you do this kind of stuff right. And uh, um, Sheridan wrote uh, not only Sicario, but he also wrote uh, Hell or High Water. Yes, yes which, which we bring up again. <laughs> this is like two years in a row. We're just Multiple like, Hell or High Water. Times. Can we put it, like, you meant, you joked earlier, can we put it on this list again? Yeah. So this is... uh, I put Taylor Sheridan on this list. Yeah. This is his ascendancy, right? Through uh, paying your dues, right? You're a writer who makes these things. No, you're an actor. Yeah. And then you move up to to writer writer, to director. To director. And so they give you, of the three Taylor Sheridan written movies, I think... And this is not like a slam, but I think maybe Wind River is the lesser of the three. I would agree. Sicario, Hell or High Water... And mm-hmm. this one, but it, however, like you said, not a slam. But not a slam because it's still better than most things you're going to see this yeah. year. I'd say it's the third best thing that I saw this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, the way that he, I mean, like this guy, and this, you know, it also goes for. There's another guy called uh, uh, I think it's S. Craig Zoller. S. Craig Zoller, who wrote Bone, Bone Tomahawk. Tomahawk, and this year he did yeah. uh, Brawl and Cell Block Nine. Another which movie I, don't think I still you guys need to have see. Seen. No, yeah, because again, it's it's a writer's medium, yeah. right? Where I mean, Bone Tomahawk, you got to see, you got to see Brawl and Cell Block Ninety Nine. But um, like the like uh, uh, these guys, what they share in common is they are able to create a sense of place that is so specific. That you would swear to God, the person who wrote this movie must know everything there is, or must be from this area. Mm-hmm. He creates characters that are so vividly realistic. I mean, but it's a it's a murder mystery, right? There's a, a girl turns up dead on the uh, uh, it's Wyoming, in yeah. the snow, and a Native American like uh, reservation, yeah, 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 yeah on, a, reservation on a reservation. Yeah. And Jeremy Renner's not a detective; he's a uh, like a tracker for the the, the game. game U.S. Uh, oh shit, the wildlife and game, wildlife, yeah, yeah wildlife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, and there's a name Game for of it. Wildlife, whatever, yeah. Sorry, I've had beers. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had beers. That's it's a great shirt. Sorry, I've had, I've, had yeah, I've had beers. Sorry, I've had beers. Saturday Night Freak Show, <laughs> copyright. Sorry, I've had beers. But Elizabeth That's Olsen great. is the FBI agent, but she's new to the game and completely out of her element. Mm-hmm. But I don't think this diminishes her character. I think she's still like, you know, you're watching someone kind yeah. of. I don't think he means to. No, because I think her arc, this is why, you know, this is what it's important about making movies, Mm -hmm. right? Is to give characters, I think like you were saying about playwrights and people who are writers first Mm -hmm. and movie fans or movie uh, makers second, writers understand uh, dramatic character arcs. And like, because she becomes the person who takes charge, you know, but it's like you have to watch what a person has to go through to Mm -hmm. get to that moment where it's like, now I am assuming the uh, the authority of my office, you know that kind of thing. And Runner has a she's, different. She's very much, sorry to interrupt, but she's very much like I'm the person they sent, but I'm going to do my damnedest. Yeah, like it's it's yeah. tenacity. Yeah. You know, Kayla, did you see this movie? I have not seen okay. it yet. Okay, so I guess I won't. <laughs> right, we're so okay we'll right now. It's all, yeah, it's all we'll, good. We'll, okay, okay, you're good. You're good. We're okay. Just don't, right. Colin. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I guess you go watch it while we're discussing this. <laughs> That's my homework. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I was, you know, as a first film uh, from a director, you know, it's like I think his actors, you know, trusted him enough, and I think it's because they had such a good part, both of them. I think Runner. Yeah. Maybe the best thing I've ever seen him in. Seriously, he did like, phenomenal. It's a, yeah, it's I mean, a low bar. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, a low, low bar. bar. Yeah, but Have I you think seen Dahmer. Yes, it's terrible. It's <laughs> a joke. It's terrible. It's the worst movie. There's in the episode world. of Angel. Yeah. That movie pisses me. I off think so this much. might oh my be the God, best. Thing. Even in Arrival, he was nothing. Like he was nothing in Arrival. He even. wasn't. Like, he wasn't great. Yeah. No, but he's he's good in this. He's good in this yeah. because it's that kind of character. You know, that's he like lives in this world, and you yeah, feel he's that he the does. guy who's at one with the land kind of thing. But there's more to him than that. I mean, you, you have to see it. It's like this is a really if you appreciate. It's, yeah, it's good not a, it's writing. not a che- right, because it's, it's not a cheesy. He's one with the land. It's like this is his job. This is where he lives. Yeah, he, he know this is what he does. He's like but he's a, not Native to American. Him it's but, nothing. Right. It's, this is what I do, and you know. But okay, and fine. Also, I'll help you do this. And there's also a backstory to the character that yeah. is not oh, that gosh. ties directly. It does, and it's not. He's emotionally involved. Yeah 
not told to you. It's just like you get little pieces of it as you go along. I think that's what I really appreciate. It unfolds as it goes. It's beautiful. The of the plot. Yeah. It's not like so many movies. And if you watch them knowing this, you know, I, I forget what we were watching. Uh, I just watched uh, The Rock very recently. Oh, I've, yeah. I've seen it before. <laughs> right? How does that age? I've seen it before. Huh? How does it age? Uh, terribly. Because. Aww. Wait, Nick Cage, Sean Connery? The Rock? Yeah, yeah. The Rock. Okay. Yeah. I, no, Sean, I, that's on Criterion. I'm saying that I haven't I seen it. it in a long time. I have seen it. But, like, it, there is a scene early on where a guy steps into a room and says, like, you know, as the minister of defense or the, the the head of the state department's whatever program, we have this blah 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 blah. And then the guy across from him, but you can't have this and that and the other thing because I'm the something something something. You know, and basically they're telling you who they are, why they think what they do, what position they have. No. Like it was just like it's these just are not spelled characters. out for you. Yeah. This is exposition dump. You yeah. know. That's not good writing, I don't mm-hmm. think. Good no. writing is where, like, as you're sitting there watching R- Wind River, you're kind of piecing it together. It's like you're in your actually head. getting to know someone. Like, if you get to know someone as like a new friend, you're not going to get everything right up front. You're going to slowly learn things about them, and that's how this is done. Yeah, yeah. Now they present like Jeremy Renner and his uh, ex-wife. Like, they present those characters, and you can feel like a chasm between those two, and you don't know why right off the mm-hmm. bat because yeah. no They're one's not standing. Tell you. No one's going to yeah. stand there and just tell you why. Look. Look, I know our daughter died like 15 years ago, but can you get over that already? Or like, yeah. can we get past that? It's like, no, they don't tell you that. Yeah. It's they, like they real let people you talk to each right. other, right? Exactly. It's like, I know this and you know this. I'm not taking any of this Somebody, in, so it's, it'll, okay. it's in one ear out of the other. Right. So We're just listening to, I think, Bill, Bill Pullman on a Leonard Malton podcast. And he was saying a, 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 drama, a drama teacher once told him about the key of screenwriting. I'm going to fuck this up. But one of the, one of the tenets is like your character's are always lying or they're trying to get something, right? Mm -hmm. And they never, I think bad writing is like if you, Lister, are watching a movie and a character is telling you who they are, what they want, what relationship they have to everybody else in the room, what they want specifically, this is like, it's just, (laughs) it's functional writing, right? Good writing is when everybody is not, you like, you can, when you can tell watching the movie what they want, but what they are saying is like the opposite. Or like you watch Game of Thrones, right? Mm. Yeah, that's a it's really well written yeah. show yeah. because all those characters, I know what they want and what <laughs> I they're can thinking say that now. Because I've seen <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they never say explicitly what they want. No yeah. one is expedition exposition dump in Game of no. Thrones. Yeah. Not one character does yeah. that yeah. ever. And that I think is good writing. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. this movie has it, and we probably spent too much time on it. But Wind no, River, I think it's uh, worth it. Yeah. yeah, you got to see. <laughs> Sean, what's Number two. Number two. Numero dos. We were talking earlier about Netflix movies. And so I present Here to comes. you. Bright. But you haven't seen it. Gerald's Game. Gerald's Game. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm shocked. But you happy. shouldn't be. Because God damn it. I was very surprised by this movie. I was surprised yeah. about how effective it was for me. Um, the... We'll get to the like the story elements and the actors of like uh, Carla Gugino and uh, yeah Rob Devine Bruce Greenwood, right? Because sure. it's not theatrical. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's all those elements to it, but just in in an area where I'm so disappointed by kind of the elements that the elements of a movie that scare me or make me feel uneasy. This movie pulled them off because when this movie mm-hmm. goes into the element of the guy who comes in later on, oh my god, and is just standing, I was scared. I was actually scared yeah. when they first went into that character. I was, and too. that doesn't happen for me. And so, for a movie to be able to pull that off and to make me uneasy watching something like that happen, because shit like that is what scares me. Mm-hmm. If there's just a dude mm-hmm. hanging mm-hmm. out in a corner and you see like barely a little bit of the face and I, when they first did that scene I was just like holy shit what's going on what is that mm-hmm. it scared me yeah and for a movie to do that thank god somebody is still able to do that Mike Flanagan is the director of this movie yeah yeah he's like the white knight the savior Duke, of the uh, the <laughs> horror genre you, you say this but you haven't seen the Duke. blows my mind I haven't seen the Duke. no dude, that's very true dude, Duke scared the shit out of me I, have, I need to watch this movie might need to come to a freak show episode soon or something it almost yeah. did yeah. It, it did. It, it, did. And it, it got lost. It got lost. <laughs> uh, but for Mike the, Flanagan also did uh, Hush. 
Uh, he did, he did Hush. Oh, I like Hush. Hush, yeah. Hush uh, Oculus. Oculus before that, and um, sorry, his first movie was his first movie Oculus. He did another one. Yeah, new anime. Okay. I liked Hush. That was practically no. Terrifying. He did uh, Ouija two. Oh, Ouija two. Yeah. Yep. There you right. go. That was the studio. So which he was, was like a better graduating movie. through. Which the... is a movie I was actually like curious to see because it like that looked like. Eh, pretty if you cool. haven't seen it, it's good. I mean, like he's a good because he's like James Wan. One of these rare filmmakers. There's so many people making horror movies. Yeah. But so few Too of many. them actually understand why horror or how it works. Yeah. And I think it comes down to like suspense. Yeah. Both of these guys can do like these scenes where you just like, Jesus Christ, you know, the yeah. tension. Yeah. Yeah. He creates great tension in his movies. And for, for Gerald's game, just the interaction between like, uh, I'm, I mean, if you haven't heard, seen it, I won't give too much away, but like bec- between Carla Cuccino and the other characters should show up in that bedroom. Mm-hmm. Like that whole interaction throughout that movie is, it's fantastic because it builds a suspense as to like, She's she's stuck in a situation and she's got to get out of it or mm-hmm. she's going to die. And just how she thinks about that and like the characters that I mean essentially she's creating throughout that like it's her, her it's yeah. her thoughts it's her, wa- her deepest darkest thoughts yeah. come to life. You're watching her psyche unfold and it's basically and it's unnerving. Because yeah. like because you also put yourself in her situation like how would you think mm-hmm. if you were stuck in the situation she's stuck in? Mm-hmm. All of that by I mean Carla Gugino, Bruce Greenwood and then Carla Gugino again. Like all this of that is one is of the great. best things about the movie, right? It's like you can see her range because she's playing two versions of herself. Yeah. She is. Like in the same scene, right? And same like, scene, same. Oh scene. shit! Jesus Christ! That, that's a very different yes. performance than this one. Very different. There's uh, and then we get to like there's the added element of like the character who comes in later is what we talked about is like the scary shit for me. I'm just like that worked very well for me, and for a movie to do that, bravo! Because I'm not one that is like easily convinced by that stuff or scared by it, and that did something for me. Um, there's a few, like the ending, I think goes on eh, maybe a little long, but I'm okay with it where, where the character ends up with that. But there's also like some really good practical effects in this movie. Like there's certain scenes where she's oh, in the Jesus. handcuffs and everything. <laughs> Woo. It's, That's the most cringeworthy oh, scene I think I've seen oh, in the movie this It's pretty year. horrifying. Oh yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was Fucking it's brutal. Oh, it's yeah. brutal. Mm-hmm. And it's brutal in brutal in its reality. Because mm-hmm. I feel like something like that could and I very did, definitely I didn't see happen. It coming. Like that it was gonna be that that she would extreme. have to do that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't Just, see that coming. Woo. Degloving, that's all we'll say. <laughs> that term is disgusting. It's, it's gross, itself, so. and it means, yeah. Apparently, that's a real medical it term. It is a real medical term, term. Yeah. and it's yeah. just, yeah. oh, it's it's disgusting. Kind of just bad, bad things. Here. Oh, but uh, Gerald's Game is such an effective movie. They even use, like, um, I didn't even recognize him, because I forgot that he was in it. Um, uh, what's his name? Is it Thomas Elliott? Oh, um, uh, oh, God. Uh yeah, from no to from Elliot, e. is, Elliot is his character. No, Thomas, in E.T. Uh, oh. Henry Thomas. Henry yeah, Thomas. Henry yeah, Thomas. <laughs> Henry Thomas plays that character mm-hmm. very well, and I was very uncomfortable. And he was in Ouija too. He, oh, was yeah. he? Mm-hmm. I'm very he uncomfortable. Stock characters, or you know, like a company of people that he's used in other movies. Nice, because I think the girl from uh, Oculus and Ouija too. I think she plays. Yeah, I think she's in Gerald's Game. Yeah. I could be wrong. I think so. If he if that is the case, he uses his characters, but he uses them effectively. Henry Thomas is unsettling to me in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but this whole movie is like very effective and worked on me very well. And for a horror movie of uh, I mean a horror suspense movie of this sort to do that to me to make me feel these things, holy shit, that doesn't happen a lot. It was so surprising. Gerald's game was surprising. surprising. It was excellent. I really had a good time. Wa- I'm a good time. Good time watching it. But like, I appreciate everything he did yeah. for this. And wow, I that was it was a good movie for me. So Gerald's game is my number two for the year. Currently Woo. being held hostage on Netflix. Ooh, yeah. Go to Netflix and watch. <laughs> you know, you all have Netflix. 
Go watch it now. Yeah, you better. Sure. Wow. Because, I mean, I don't know. I, I fucking hate it. I want a copy of that on my shelf, and I'm never, I do too. never gonna get it. That was, <laughs> whew, uh, it was good. You might eventually. Stranger yeah, Things. Stranger Things. Things. Yeah, Things. Things. Yeah. Yeah. That's not too. gonna sell at all. Yeah. <laughs> so they're gonna go, nope. At least digital copy or something. But Gerald's Game. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. That, that was, was also oh. like, if we don't get into like the Stephen King of it all, like, he had there a good go. year. He had a good year this year. Did you see Dolores Claiborne? Anybody? No, I have not seen it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's an explicit reference, because the, the two books came out, uh, Dolores Claiborne and Ger- Gerald's Game came out around the same time. Mm-hmm. They have they share an event, which is the uh, eclipse. Okay. Where it's witnessed from, because those they're geographically close to each other. I think they're across the bay. And so the, that moment... Uh, in Gerald's game, I was surprised as a fan of the book. I mean, I read, oh, in I her read the book. In the yeah. flashback, oh, she's seeing yeah, 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 yeah. And so I went back and then watched Dolores Claiborne, and I'm like, I still think Kathy Bates got fucking robbed for an Oscar for that <laughs> movie because it came out, it was in like a January or February movie. And by, uh, I can't remember what year it was, but by the time, you know, Oscars ran, came around, nobody was thinking about it anymore. But uh, you should definitely see that movie. It, it It's a really good movie. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I'm surprised. Yeah. I Christopher that, Plummer, yeah, I've heard uh, about Jennifer it Jason yeah. Lee, and and Kathy Bates, uh, really good. Stephen King, yeah. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention it. Jennifer Jason Lee is in Good Time. Uh, I forgot to mention that way at the beginning of this. She's also in Amityville Awakening. So is she? Yeah. So that's the bottom. Yeah, of the I know. Top it's like category. she's slumming it, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but she was, after that hateful eight, you know, yeah, yeah just like, like oh whatever. But she was good in Good yeah. Time. Holly, number two. Number, number two. two. Um, I'll make it quick because Colin already talked about it. Wind River. Oh, Absolutely. Nice. I loved that movie so much. It was unbelievably gorgeous. The The way it was shot was just, oh, it was dreamlike. It was gorgeous. Um, the writing is just something on a new level. Like it was, I, I put it on par with. Um, uh, three billboards both of those movies like i i watched them in the same week and i was just like my heart was just filled I was what like, a depressing <laughs> double feature yeah no i had a depressing almost like your depressing double feature oh last my year, one though. last year where i watched uh manchester by the sea and what was it moonlight, moonlight? back to back oh, jesus yeah no yeah no it don't was- don't recommend See, the thing is, though, like, it didn't bother me because like the fact that the writing is so beautiful it 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 like it didn't okay. depress me as much um because this movie is just gorgeous. The characters are ph- phenomenal. The acting is amazing. And one thing I really, truly love about it, and is one of the big points of the movie, is that it it sheds a light on actual um, problems with Indian reservations, yeah. Native American reservations, whatever you want to call it. Um, it there is a serious problem with with politics. The fact that they don't have help. They don't have. They are forgotten. <laughs> they are people. forgotten. Like, and this movie really encapsulates that, like, so much. Like, you see, the they they don't have the protection. They don't have help. They don't have like they've got drug problems. It's just it's heartbreaking, and it's just so. I'm so glad that a light is shed on this. You know, like it's. But it, it feels like it needs more. Like, well, I mean, one of the characters. Is, well, yeah, that's the point. Yeah, right. Uh, I. It, one of the characters earlier on is like he he's he's uh, it's him and his buddy. It's very early on in the movie, like but they've given up. They they feel like they know where yes. they've come from, and they're just like, I'm. It's not getting any better than this for me. Like this it's, is my life. This is what I'm supposed to do: be shitty and, and and this life of crime and all that stuff. And that's that's the realness that I'm so happy mm-hmm. is coming to light. It's just, it's so, oh, it's so heartbreaking, um, and the fact that. Actual Native American actors are getting work. That, that was my question. Uh, that was my question. Because, so, like, you guys keep talking about this movie, and I obviously haven't seen it, but, like, the two leads are very obviously white people. So I was yeah. I'm no, very the- confused by the fact that there are two very famous white people in this movie. Yeah. And John Bernthal's also in it. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, so where do the people because, of color come in? Because like, this is the year that John Bernthal just showed up and shit. And, and then, then walked, walked out. Yeah. Li- that guy, literally walked out of the name? movie. Uh, Graham Greene, who's like in every movie about an Indian since Dances with Wolves. Yeah, Graham yeah. Greene. And uh, Gil Birmingham, who was the uh, Jeff Bridges' partner in 
Hell or high water. Oh, yeah. Just to yeah. check yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Take good check drink. that box. Yeah. Yeah. For all of you uh, Twilight but fans guess, out there, that's Jacob's dad. That's right. But that was Jacob's my dad, question really? is, yeah. <laughs> Holly, is some of that just re- related to the geography of the location? Like, how much of that is they don't have help because, the, you know, they're, they're Native Wyoming Americans. They're in Wyoming in the middle of nowhere. Because I think that the geography of it seems to play a part of, like, just the psychology of the people who live there. You know but what it's I mean? But al- it's also because, like... The fact that they have their own... They're governed by themselves. Yeah, they're governed they're, by themselves. They're self-governed. They don't, yeah. they don't yeah. have but, help. I mean, but everything's from... spread out. I mean, the landscape out there is like, you know, stark, cold, you know, because yeah, I think they, they make, make a point. To, it's like yeah, they make a point in the movie. It snows like one minute and then it, you know. Yeah, or at least when... Uh, they Renner's... get like three different kinds of seasons and like different altitudes yeah. that you go. It's just, it's a, it's a murder mystery that takes place in a like... A place where people it feels like shouldn't live, you know, right. but Even, do. But that's what they're given. Yeah, like yeah. That's, that's that's where that's, that's where yeah, that's, that's where they're at. They're that's at. Been, it's what they've been driven to. Yeah. If yeah. you go to, if you know, if a murder rape happens in the middle of the Rocky Mountains, chances are Colorado State Police are going to take care of it. Mm. Not in this. They don't have. That yeah. Kind no. Of help. It's all tribal councils. They, that take yeah. Care exactly. Of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've got what two cops? Like that's yeah. that's one of the points of the movie. Yeah, like they're shedding so a light on this. It's just. Yeah, like I, I really, like it. It both broke my heart and warmed my heart that someone is talking about this, um, and and not just like because it's not a political movie. It's just a good movie. It's a well written movie. But these topics are talked about, and I thought that, that was just wonderful. And and like I said, the the fact that Native American actors are getting work where it's not a period piece or they're like in a tribe in the eighteen hundreds. You know that they're actually playing modern people. Mm-hmm. That's really important. Mm-hmm. And In a way that's very modern, too. I mean, that was yeah. the thing. I mean, uh, Birmingham's character is, you know, I mean, I thought he was self-depreciating in a kind of um, familial way in Hell or High Water. Mm-hmm. But in here, he's doing something very different where, very different. you know, it's, um, and I don't know. I mean, it's it, heartbreaking. It There's is. There's a stoicism to it, which I think compounds like the heartbreak. I don't know. It's, they ha- Like, they're holding their traditions, and, but they're trying to survive, and it's I mean, just... It's like he doesn't even understand his... Tra- I mean, it, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, yeah. it's really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a really, really good movie. It's really beautiful. I, I loved it so much. Um, it's, it is sad, it's but it's... It's a hard movie. I, I don't want to say it's hopeful. That's not the word I'm looking for. It's just... It's real. It's emotional, and it, it, you... But it's, it's also a thriller, it's, and you'll get it is that. A, it, it is a thriller. It is, it's right. absolutely not, a thriller. Yeah. It's not a documentary. It's not a heavy drama. Yeah. It's yeah. a crime there's thriller, like there's yeah, thriller. and there's like yeah. shootouts and like there's action and yeah, it's, there's gunplay. Yeah, but it's it's a gorgeous movie. So number two, Wind River. It's appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. Michaela. My number two, um, we've touched on a little bit already, is Logan. Actually, ah. um, I am, sh- I, I myself am shocked this ended up where it did. But the more I thought about it, the more like actually, the more I've made it marinated in this movie, the higher it's gone up on my list. Yeah, because sure. like I think back in the year of movies we had, and this was so early. You know, technically the summer movie season starts in like March now. It doesn't even start in like May. It's it's like March because you know this year in March we had Logan, and then we had Power Rangers, and we had um, oh god, what was that? Um, <laughs> It was that Scarlett Johansson movie that we watched? Ghost in the Shell. Yes, that. Oh, we had that. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, summer- they didn't make top five list? What? So, I mean, summer movie season starts so much earlier now. But Logan is like... Summer this- movie season started last summer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> At this point, yes. It, it goes from like... Uh, award season straight into summer movie season at right. this point. We can't yeah. have a gap where we're just nope. like, oh, movies you can go watch. Now nope. it's like, no, we need a season now. They have to be motivated by something. Yeah, yeah. you got to be yeah. motivated to yeah. release a movie. But Logan is this gritty Western gore fest <laughs> that I did not expect really when I went in to see it. Like I knew it was going to be R-rated, but like opening scene, blades through skulls like immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and this movie proves that comic book movies don't have to be that like slick like um, formulaic marvel machine they can be they can be like outside of that and i am someone that is feeling the superhero fatigue more than anyone like i just i hear new marvel movies come out I'm like okay it's going to be abc sky portal like sky portal is going to be the end uh, sky- you know because it's not a superhero movie unless the sky portal opens up at some point. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Um, Let's not forget the glowy fine. thing. Uh, yeah, the glowy the, or the like the cube that everybody wants. It's, it's a cube, and cubes. a cube and a sky portal, and that's <laughs> it. Yeah, but this movie, like, 
it it really showed me that they do not have to follow into that that mold. And it's it, it's so it's such a shame that it had to be the last movie in the franchise to realize that. Mm. Like when you think about the fact that we had Hugh Jackman for so long and it took this long to get to this point, it's really sad when you think about it that way. But I mean, the Wolverine made some kind of inroads into this. A little you know, bit. I mean, it tried. Yeah. It, it really tried. tried. Yeah. Within the within the confines of where they needed to be, I guess, or where they mm-hmm. were expected to be as part of that mm-hmm. Fox Marvel system. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. remember being more impressed than I thought I would yeah. be by the Wolverine. You know, right? Like, yeah. Okay. There's still a giant we on silver the samurai movie? at yeah. the end oh, of that yeah. robot. <laughs> well, yeah. But this one also has the at the end. There's the you know guy with the robot hand and. You know, I mean, well, right, there's these it, tropes that you, there are. Yeah, because oh yeah, there that are were, like there are ex children at the end of this yeah, movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have a little side story about that actually. So my so my boss is someone that is really bad about remembering the names of movies. So he'll come up to me and he'll start describing movie, but Michaela, because he knows I've seen it. So he'll describe it to me and be like, "Do you have a so you know that movie?" And like he'll describe it to me and be like, "Yeah, it's that." And like usually I'm right, right? So he comes up to me and he goes, he goes, "So what's that movie where like Hugh Jackman fights that big robot?" And I'm like, "Real Steel." <laughs> and he's like sure. no 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 it's not it's not real steel and he's like you know Hugh Jackman he's like fighting and he's all ripped in like there's a big robot at the end in the in the climax I'm like real, it's real steel, steel. <laughs> and he goes no it's like in Japan and I was like are you talking about the Wolverine and he like, was yes. like he is like yeah yeah that's it and I'm like you seriously are describing the movie as <laughs> as well as Hugh Jackman fighting a robot and it's not real steel <laughs> like like this is what I work with on a daily basis is people like this but um, it's like my boss. It's yeah. Like every time he starts a conversation, it's it feels like he had a conversation earlier. It's the middle of a I was thought. Not yeah. Part yeah. Of, it's the middle of a thought. Yeah. With me. Yeah. I'm just like ah, and expecting okay. you to catch up. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Um, but this movie like is so emotional and so brutal and like in a way I didn't expect and like the way it finishes off the movie like the way like spoiler alert skip ahead real quick um, the way Laura like takes the cross and turns it to an X. Yeah. Because like, Oh, I cried my You know, out. he had never really. I'm feeling f- emotional right now. Like he had never really like fit in with the X-Men and yeah, that was, was like the, the final moment the of him like actually being an X-Men and like, I've never cried so much in a comic book movie as much as I cried in this movie and like, I did not expect that going into it. I, I didn't really know what I expected going into this movie but it is like it plays out like all the best westerns you've ever loved, and it feels very familiar. Shane, Shane Shane's yeah. a big thing in that movie. Yeah. Shane's in the movie. Yeah. Shane's, I mean, yeah. Shane's in the movie. Shane's quoted the in the movie. Yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah. But this movie. There's no more guns in the valley. Right. This movie feels very lived in and very familiar, and like the acting across the board is really great. The relationships are really great. I think it makes great comments on what masculinity is and yeah, what it means in, in our yeah. current time. You have this man that, like, arguably Wolverine is like the most masculine figure that has ever existed in pop culture and he's taking care of an elderly man and this young girl you know I'm getting really Without, sad that we're not getting Hugh Jackman it, right movies yeah anymore. yeah take a step back it hurts it hurts a little bit but this movie has a and it also has a small scope like the scope of yeah. this movie is small and that superhero movies need to realize that's okay that, it's fine superhero movies like yeah. you can I, you can you don't need you to can, save the world you can do so much for your character in a small scale Sco- movie yeah. Mm-hmm. That will your audience will appreciate, mm-hmm. and that will help you in the long run if you do these things for your character. Exactly, it's better in the long run to have a small scope than it is a big scope. Like the world does not need to be saved every time. The world does not need to be at risk every time. No, there doesn't need to be a big thing lifting up to smash no. down on the because earth every time. The, I the think world. that's where we're like, at, yeah, the, we've we've reached, we're past that peak. Yeah, make it like, small scope and make it a slow yeah. burn. This movie is a slow burn. It's, it's very not slow. About the world at large. It's about your character's world, mm-hmm. and yeah. that's where they need to like dial it back a little bit it's the the character's world what they care about yeah. where they're experiencing not the entire world because they can't comprehend that they're not going to experience the entire world no they're not so they quit making their world. forcing that on them yeah exactly the little like, things that like affect them and mean something mm-hmm. to them and things that they can uh they can affect themselves right that's where they need to live and i feel like everyone can relate to a piece of what logan is going through in this movie like i am not someone that's been put in a position where i have to k- take care of an elderly relative but i'm sure mm. there are people in my life that do know what that's like and i'm sure that they could identify with that part of this movie because mm-hmm. watching him care for like a senile professor x is like absolutely heartbreaking to watch but that is the reality for a lot of people you know and there are just so many relatable parts 
of Logan in this movie that I did not expect to come across. Uh, I, I went in this movie just being like, it's going to be bloody and it's going to be like, go out being bloody and that's it. But I didn't expect it to be like <laughs> emotional emotionally bloody, yeah. and like, I didn't expect to cry like so many times and mm-hmm. like X 23 be such a good actress and like totally like hand off the franchise to her in a way that I'm very excited for. I'm going to watch but, this movie again. Yeah, God damn it right I, now. <laughs> I cannot recommend Logan enough. I, I am oh, pleasantly yeah. surprised have, with this movie. Have you guys seen the Logan Noir not yet. Oh yeah, I, I have not it. seen yeah, it yet. Yeah, yeah. It's, black it's, and white. Yeah. It's an actual. Yeah. It's a. It's one that works well in black and white. It does. I'm sure it, it does. It, it does. Does. feels like it should be in black and white. Yeah. So it works. So that's my number two, Colin. All right, my number two is the best horror movie of the year. Uh, this is. Oh, I know. So you're like, what is it? Ooh. Is it Stephen King's It? No, it's Stephen, game, no, it's not. If you've is listened it, to our episode on It, we know that it's not. No, I mean, I think, uh, okay, so I mean, as a personal opinion, I think it's Get Out. I think Jordan Peele's directorial debut. Um, I I mean, I like this movie for several reasons. I mean, one being, uh, this is a guy's first movie. First movie. He's had a lot of experience well, that's in the directing thing. things yeah, and okay. everything. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I mean, you know, we were talking the last movie was Taylor Sheridan's first movie, and he's a guy who's written a lot of things. Yeah. And I think it's a it's a well competently directed movie. But when you look comparatively at Hell or High Water or uh, Sicario, right, you see like, uh, okay, you're you're still working your way up. You see the seams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, not even the seams, but this like is a, the, where you, where you start is really versus good. where when, you have your experience. Yeah, yeah I think that's Denny, it. Yeah, Denny, like, yeah. Denny Villeneuve is It's the same like, thing with him, for sure. Yeah. yeah, Denny Villeneuve has had the experience to be able to make a Sicario yeah. at the level that he was at. Yeah. Wind River feels like... That's a fucking solid, like, yeah. first time director. Mm-hmm. Just like, I don't feel, all right. I don't know if I feel the personality from the director, maybe in no. Wind River. However, with Get Out, it feels like I do. Like, this is yeah. a, an extremely assured, right? Sure mm-hmm. hand. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like, I know it's very confident. Confident. Yes. Yes. what yes. I am yes. doing. Yeah, I guess maybe that's the thing. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly what he's after and is able to do it. Whether he'll be able to do this in the future, I don't know. Maybe he just hit hope so. on I hope lightning the strikes right, twice. Uh, yeah. you know, subject at the right time. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I don't know what hasn't been said about this movie, you know, until now. It had... When it came out, it had this crazy lofty 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> yeah. which I'm not saying, folks, that you should. You it's know, at 99%. I checked today. So it's, <laughs> it's still at 99%. So, yeah. okay, well, you know. And I think a lot of that is probably, you know, I mean, it's like a political thing where it's like, you know, it feels like this is important because it's addressing, you know, like the black communities. Um, uh, not frustration, anxieties, yeah. or something like that. But I think, uh, and that's obviously part of it. But uh, you know, that's why I was wondering going into it. It's like you know, did some of these movies gain uh, a stature on that? You know, because we feel like we have to vote for it because, like, Twelve Years know, a Slave. Yeah, like we. That's, that's a, a good example. Good movie, that's a- <laughs> well, no, no, <laughs> it's a good like movie. That. But no, I don't want to discount Twelve Years a Slave by me saying that, but. Oh, I get we what you're saying. We can't yeah. say there's not because it's about this subject. About the subject yeah. matter, it came along in an opportune time, right? Yeah. And I don't want to. I that's not. I don't. It is a quality. It's a quality movie, movies, but yeah. it's and not as is, good as it deserves. But you know, maybe that is true about the assessment of Get Out. Maybe it came around at the right time or at the time that it came around. It's like this is when people. That's were, very true. But repeat viewings will. I think Clear repeat. Yeah, we'll get into it. But okay. on repeat viewings, I think okay. So well, first of all, uh, I've seen a lot of horror movies, right? So I, I know <laughs> that's an understatement. Colin. I know that it has the um, it's the paranoid uh, thriller, right? Mm-hmm. Where our hero has found himself in a situation. Where everyone around him, you remember the invitation from last year? Yes, yeah, I do. Uh, and then going I back, like obviously, movie. you know, the callbacks of Rosemary's Baby, but especially the Stepford Wives. Um, my like, as I was watching the movie, maybe this is the thing that I was surprised by because what I thought was going on wasn't what was going on in the movie. And this is kind of like I was sitting there going, like, Oh, I'm actually surprised by this because I expected it to be more, um, you know, uh, something to the effect of 
these you know evil white folks are Expecting trying to black? hypnotize the guy you know to like weed out his blackness or something but instead of actually, them embracing yeah, the but blackness, it, yeah, yeah and yeah. i'm like this is they, they want to be black <laughs> yeah yeah because so you, you thought it was going to be more racist and not so yeah, much like we maybe covet right? what you have well, yeah, right. yeah, yeah which i, gotcha. I think is its own form of i don't know i mean i guess we're saying that's still a form of racism yeah yeah but it's oh, like this sure. really yeah. weird because it's identifying specific elements of a different race that you're just like yeah, yeah. you're but better a, at this it's an exaggeration like i want to run really fast yeah yeah it's very cringy yeah movie's very cringy but i think this is where this is in some some ways like it's not meta but it's brilliant in a way it has to f- it has figured out a way to surprise a jaded horror film fan by coming up with something an anxiety that i don't necessarily know that the black community has you know that uh, i mean unless we're talking about like cultural appropriation. we can't know we should say we cannot know yeah, that we, can't we know. are not black people we do not know what their community yeah. has as exactly right. we cannot again, know. there's saying, elements right? that we just can't know we just can't know yeah. right well you can write in and talk to us or saturday night free show at yahoo.com do we have <laughs> listeners oh yeah we do yeah, i hope so yeah, yeah, yeah. i hope so I too hope we, do. we we go all over the world we're, okay we're, good but I mean, I guess that's the thing. It's like, is this an anxiety? Maybe that's what I'm wondering. Is this an anxiety that the black community has that was exploited? Or did he invent something that's like, this is kind of taking some other kind of uh, uh, cultural anxiety, the idea of, uh, quote unquote, cultural appropriation, right? Mm-hmm. And making that the subject of uh, of like of a horror movie. Because Jordan Peele is a comedian. Yes. Right? Oh, yes. So it seems yeah. like maybe Game this Peele. started as yeah yeah you know, on uh, a man TV way back in the day and all. Oh, uh, that, that was like, uh, Mike Keegan Michael Key. Oh, wasn't Jordan Peele was on that no. too? Uh, I think it was Keegan Michael Key was on Mad TV. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're right. I, okay. yeah. I think yeah. so. I could be wrong, but okay. I think yeah. it was Keegan Michael Key. But the idea of behind this movie seems like it could have started as. Like um, uh, like a joke. A set, oh, a satire. But yeah. he figured out, like, you know, actually, if I tweak this just a little bit, this can become like <laughs> the this. The elements it become could very be, like, real. a pretty good horror movie. Yeah. And it works because as you're watching the movie uh, from, what's the actor's name? Daniel Ku- Kalua. Kalua's Kalua, perspective, yeah. the, it's, it, it does it, that ratcheting up of tension. Uh, I mean, again, it's so it's so well done that you would have thought that this is not Jordan Peele's first movie. No, yeah, that he no. had been doing this for a while. And I mean, again, uh, good luck to you, sir. You know, doing this your second time, and I hope you don't go through the sophomore slump. I you hope know? not either. He's gonna be doing the Twilight Zone, apparently. So, but that's not. That's not necessarily a bad fit for. No, you. I think no. it's a good yeah. fit. I'm all for it. Yeah. Bring yeah. it on. I want to see it. Yeah, I yeah. want to see Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. Bring I want on. to see whatever Jordan Peele is going to do next. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, I know. He, that's, that's, did he write I guess, Keanu? I don't know. I don't know. Let's hope. Don't know. <laughs> I hope, I hope not. not. Well, I don't know. I mean, again, this is a different kind of thing. I think yeah. if 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 he's a comedian, which I think... Which he is. Well, okay. He's a comedian that uh, I think maybe found his voice. In the horror genre, and I'm hoping that he makes more horror movies. I like do his comedies, well. and I'm like, eh. But you make more horror movies, and but, I'll keep well, watching. But the thing these. that connects those is like comedy and horror share so many elements that yeah, create a reaction from their audience. It's the exactly, timing, and everything. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it's yeah. a perfect combination yeah. that he would come from one to be able to do the other. Yeah, yeah. I I prefer. Horror that has comedy f- like fairly laced into it, right? But like you said, it's like it's like the timing of yeah. of introducing certain elements mm. that you get from comedy and horror that is what mm-hmm. makes yeah. it effective. Horror yeah. timing and comedic timing are very similar. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's almost almost mathematical in some way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you he's know, got it, the perfect equation, man. He does he figured that shit out. It's pretty good. I mean, mm-hmm. again, I think it. You know, of the horror movies that I've seen, unless I'm backtracking right now, I'm trying to think what, but I don't no, think no I've seen that. anything that was better as a straight out horror movie than aside from Jarelsky. Then <laughs> that's after something else. This yeah. is more like straight ahead. It's horror and panic and that oppressive feeling of dread yeah. that I guess I got from yeah. uh, the witch didn't have panic, right? Last year, which I really yeah. like that, but I mean it's. Uh, yeah, it's. I think I'm gonna. Yeah, it's, it's the best horror movie. So you know, maybe you're out there going like, well, you know, it's it. 
it's the best horror movie of the year, whatever. <laughs> but it is built on a roller coaster uh, ride kind of mentality. And I'm not knocking it. If any of you guys are picking it for number one, I'm sorry. No, they're, but, complete, but they're completely built, different. They're completely, completely different. different. It's completely different. It's also built on a lot of things that came before it. That's exactly. Right. They're, they're so minutes, they're not, they're apples so and oranges. Different. They're yeah. completely yeah. But, different. Yeah. I mean, if you love it, I love it too. It works. It's you know, it's a scary movie. Don't apologize. Go get yeah. out. Yeah, okay, no. so get out. Number mm. two. Sean, what's number one? Well, it's funny that you talked about the movie you did, Colin, because my number one is Get Out. That movie this year, I think, was the most, or one of the most effective movies of the year. Obviously, it's my number one. Um, But I think Jordan Peele, I think he wrote a script that was. I think he wrote a script. I think I think he wrote a script. Did you <laughs> he, write a script? He might, he, he might have he written wrote something for this movie. <laughs> I think he wrote a script that was very, uh, a very human, uh, very uh, re- revelatory of like the things that certain people experience. That, um, and it was also it was very funny. Like it's a very funny script as well. It is very funny. Uh, it's it's and it's also funny as the revelations come along. Um, I mean, not not too funny where you have to nominate it for a comedy Golden Globe. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's word not word. word. Oh I'm gonna say that's not An correct. Insult. Yeah, it is. Yes, yeah. It is. Yes. It is taking I the seriousness so. out of that movie. It is I mean, taking it down a peg. What are and they doing there? Is that trying to like we want to get this movie? That's in there, trying but to give it's it the not best good opportunity to, to win awards. A drama? No, no, no. No. So we're going to nominate as a comp. Well, maybe the drama Universal slots are maybe, already taken. Maybe Universal thinks so because uh, they they're trying. Choose. They did okay because they chose it without even telling Jordan Peele. And then he's and then he released a statement later that said like, "All right, I I get what they were trying to do. I I imagine that he was just like he couldn't he wouldn't have signed off on like, hey, we're going to go for a comedy. He wouldn't have signed off on that. And to give to label this as a comedy in that regard, as far as Golden Globes." is concerned and whatever credence you give to the Golden Globes I mean it's voted on by like 70 people it's the Hollywood Foreign it's Press the Hollywood Foreign Press which makes up about 70 people at this point so I don't put too much but isn't in. it usually considered more fair than the Academy Awards I, I don't the Academy Awards is m- more made up of the actors category is the largest category in the Academy Academy Awards voting okay, okay. so that is I feel more I don't know, more in in line with like how Hollywood feels about this. Mm-hmm. The foreign press feels the foreign press is always like it's a wild card game. Like anything it, could be it voted very for much anything. Is, yeah. Anything could win anything. It's really like wow, it's going to be a wild night. So there's that. I don't agree that it's entered in the comedy category. Like I think that does a disservice to this movie. It's undermining the movie. It, it, it really, really is. is especially yeah, for the message is. they're going for. It's really undermining this movie as far as I'm concerned. Um, and that's just as far as I'm concerned. If you share that uh, opinion, great. Awesome. You're with me. Um, but I think this is one of the most effective movies that was made this year. Um, it was directed extremely well. The writing was like, it's it's a layered complex movie. Uh, I think uh, people can uh, relate to this movie. The um, experiences that the main character of this movie has, I think, and this is, again, and I have to say, this is me talking as a white man um, in a movie that stars a black character who I can't relate to as being a black character. Like, I don't know the situations that he experiences versus mine. Yeah, but what are movies for? I mean... To put you subjectively in the position right. of right, but this is written by a black man, so we don't know right. But what he's that, trying to put us what in that. those are those those writings are coming from right. And he's trying to put us in that in the character's perspective. I think he does. I'm in my perspective. This movie does a, a very good job because I feel like I, I feel the awkwardness of what this character feels and the situations he's in, the things he feels, the. Even if you go with the backstory of what happened to his mother versus what happens to him in this movie, like the very beginning of this movie, they hit the deer and he's having flashbacks to that, how he just sat around while his mother died. And he acted the hell out of this movie. 
Who's he that? acted the hell oh out of this God. movie. Daniel Kalu is a good find. Oh, He's a man. good find. He's been in some good stuff. He's Sicario. Coming Sicario. Don't tie it all back. Tie it all back. Black Mirror. He was good in Sicario. <laughs> oh, Black, yeah, Mirror. Yeah. Gonna in Black, Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's in the new Black Panther. Black yeah. Panther. Mm-hmm. He's in Black Panther. I think he's like one of the right hand mans of uh, Chadwick Boseman. Black Panther. Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman. But I think it's one of like it also like I rewatched it recently. And I'm better, I can get a better handle on movies once I've gone back and watched them for the second time. Because I think anybody who watches uh, just a movie once would just have that gut reaction to what they're seeing on screen. Uh, uh, yeah, you can get time to think about it and everything, but like I think you need to, you for me, see movies at least twi- two or three times to get a full handle on what everyone's trying to do in this movie. Um I watched it again recently, and it still fucking works on yeah. me. Like, uh, there's, it's, it's tense. It's uncomfortable, as I think he's trying to make it. I think it's. It also gets down to like horror movie shit, where you know you're stabbing people with fucking elk horns in the yeah. mouth. Like Bradley Whitford gets it fucking good, yeah. and he's like, great in this movie too. Yeah, he's yeah, he everyone's is. everyone. Oh, yeah. everyone it's an insinuating like. Uh, it's not. Is it? Like, it's not terror that you you feel te- you know it's a tension it's yeah. tension yeah. it's an uneasiness yeah. from these characters it's like you're being so nice why do I right. feel so uneasy around yeah. right it, that's exactly yeah. how it's like oh you're being so nice to me it's the uneasiness mm-hmm. that you it's the offness that you feel for all these characters around our main character and I think it gives you like it gives you everything in this movie like you know fucking Stephen Root gets the top of his head cut off and everything and there's just it ah, starts spoilers ah uh, uh, well you'll all right this yeah. movie's almost a year old at this point <laughs> if you, you haven't should, seen it you're sleeping is, you yeah. should have seen yeah. Get Out at this yeah. point but there's just it gets whatever level you want to be on for like a quote unquote horror movie I think this gives it to you at a certain point in this movie even like even it's just so layered like the fucking uh, the I'm I'm gonna go into spoiler territory. This the fucking character gets out of the situation he's in because he picks cotton out of his chair and puts it in his ears. There's yeah. so much like this it's, symbolism it's throughout so this symbol, movie. Yeah. There's so much. It's so layered. There's so much symbolism. Like it is a smart movie. Yeah. Like he it is written so smartly by this character, uh, or by by Jordan Peele. Like it's so good. It's enjoyable on many levels. Um, I really enjoy this movie. I really enjoy going back and watching this movie. There's so much to it. Um, there's even like extra stuff if you watch like the original ending they had to this movie. And why I, I, I can't deal with that original ending. I can't. And well, I can't. and like, but the reason behind why he changed it is mm-hmm. because it's like, well, uh, everything that's going on, we need. We need a hero. We need a good ending to this because mm-hmm. the original ending is like it's it's, it's such a bleak it bleak hurts. ending. It's, it's the night like, of the living. It's, well, not the night. It's a uh, well, yeah, it is, but it's, it's bleak and it's, it's bleak. Yeah. It's bleak yeah. and it's true. It's a horrifying ending. Yes. Well, it, a defeatist. I mean, maybe it, it leaves you with the kind of like. I mean, I, I think maybe that's why I like the movie. That by the end of it, there's moments where you cringe because you think you know what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it like Hostel, right? Hostel was another one that did yeah. this, where it kind of had that uh, moment at the end where you know you go from this really low point of tension mm. to a kind of uh, you know uh, like a cheer. Yeah. You know, which the best horror right. movies do. Right, you know, which he kinda, which he gives to us in this because yeah. he brings it's like you, you can't be fucking bleak all the goddamn no. time or it's just oppressive. Yeah. And he brings you to the lowest point you can near the end of this movie. You're just like, oh shit, this is what's going to happen. And what does that say about the world we live in now, where we're like, we see, we know where it's going. We we yeah. think we know where it's going, and we're just so. Everyone is just like, oh shit, like, no, please, no, please, no, no, no. It's it brings the most dread. Because it brings the most dread you get from this movie out of real life. Yeah. Because it's real life that is influencing this movie at that moment that makes us feel the most dread for the main character of this movie. That is an effective horror movie. And to be able to do that, to be able to take, I think, the... It it, it shows the sign of the times, but it also, I think, goes beyond that. And I think it's uh, one of the most effective movies I've watched this year, and if not in many years. Mm-hmm. So, Get Out, my number one for this year. Bravo, Holly. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I feel kind of sad that we had to make this top five because 
<laughs> Get Out and Logan were both in and out of my top five throughout this thought process. But I had to be true to myself and pick Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know what? Nothing, I'm else not is surprised. More, nothing else is more true to Holly than picking Spider-Man Homecoming if for If I had one. picked anything else, you would have been like, you fucking liar. That's, you like Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming. That's very true. How many times have you seen it in theaters, Holly? Five. Five times. Five times. Um, and I did pay for it once. Bravo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> that's right. She has a get in free card. She's not like yeah. sneaking into the When it expire? Is that done yet? <laughs> um, I'm getting it again next year. <laughs> are you? Did you get it? Are you getting it again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bravo. Merry Christmas. Good job. Yay! Good job. Merry free Christmas. Free movies for Holly. <laughs> Um, oh, brother. Yeah, so I had to pick Spider-Man Homecoming. But you, I, but that's <laughs> a, a bigger thing. You paid for it once. I did. I paid for it. Um, I, I I loved this movie so much. Um, and I think what Michaela was saying about Logan earlier about how you don't have to defeat the entire world or the entire universe to be a superhero. They brought that with Spider-Man Homecoming. This is a kid taking on new challenges that a normal 15 year olds take on and then the superheroes take on and it's just a refreshing movie that like it's basically like john hughes made a marvel movie like it's it hits all those wonderful points about i don't want to say coming of age because that just like that's right we're tired of using that we're tired of that stop using that phrase it's not it it will turn people off when it's like yeah that's not it's not what it is, but it is it is a, a growing up a kid learning how to deal with learning these things, and it's it's such a refreshing superhero movie, and it's it's how in my opinion, it's how Spider Man was supposed to be. Um, I think Tom Holland is perfection as Spider Man. I think he did a wonderful job, and I think John Watts really brought something as a director to this movie, like. He brought what I think what everyone wanted from Spider Man. Um, Can we just give a, a shout out to uh, um, the uh, Captain America like interstitials in this movie and uh, what's his name? Um, uh, who's the comedian who plays the gym teacher? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember his name, but yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure he's a war criminal now, but you can just watch this I'm pretty shit. sure this guy's a war criminal now, but yeah, I have to show <laughs> yeah. it to you, so here you go. Um, that's what I'm a, I bring that up because that's what John Watts is bringing to this Exactly. Movie, that's what John Watts brought to this. He has a humor and like a relatability of, like, you feel like you, not just that you, not just that you would be friends with Spider-Man, but that you could be Spider-Man. And that's... I think that's what these movies are supposed to be. That's what, they're, you know, they're not necessarily, I know Spider-Man's going to end up fighting Thanos, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> he might get killed by Thanos. I mean, no, he's got like three more movies. Well, um, but I'm not saying they can't bring him back, Holly. That's true. I've thought I'm about just, that. I'm, Doctor I'm, Strange could bring him back. Yeah, anyway, right. I'm sorry. Saying he might get killed by Thanos. <laughs> I know, I've thought about it. Um, but I just, I, I feel like, I feel like exactly what Michaela was saying earlier about Logan like this movie brought something back to where Marvel movies should be. Um, I, I think it's just, it's so much fun to watch. It's funny. It's heartfelt. The, the relationships are very true. Like Peter and aunt may, they have a wonderful relationship. I actually want to see more of that, that character interaction. I think it's fantastic. Um, and actually, if you guys haven't watched the bonus features, there's a lot of, there's uh, a lot. I watched them all <laughs> there. Yeah. I watched all of them. Oh, I watched all. There's a lot more of those little Captain America snippets, and they're fucking hilarious. <laughs> there's one where he's talking about a hot lunch, and I about pissed myself. I was laughing so hard. They're so good. They're so funny. They're oh, so it's funny. So good, and it's so good that oh, they incorporated. It's so great. Captain America into those. Um, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, the you know, it, it's not going to get on those depths that that like Wind River or Three Blue Birds is going to get on, but it's it's enjoyable, and that's what my top five is about. It's movies that made me happy at the movies like whether i was happy about like seeing writing go to a new place or seeing wonder woman go through no man's land spider-man made me happy it just it hit all the points that it that i needed um going to the movies is an escape for me and this movie was definitely an escape it was fun it was heartfelt it's smart it's 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 a refreshing superhero movie and that's why it's my number one it's to warm my heart. I love it. That's a good point, Holly. Yeah. We we have to 
I think, step back and remember that maybe we shouldn't take the movies we watch so seriously as we do. Yeah. Because going to the movies is an escape. Yeah. That way we're less, least likely to be colossally disappointed by them. As we'll get to. Yeah. 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 As we'll get to, yeah. After the number one. As we'll get to, yes. I say yeah. this as we get to the point where yeah. we're just like, I was very disappointed yes. in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but maybe we shouldn't take them so seriously. Yeah. But that's the thing, too. I think, you know. But you need to talking... hold them to a standard as well. You can't not. Yeah, right. you need, they need to be held to a standard. They do. That's very true. And Don't just, the, we can't just the, like let them just keep we, bringing crap. We to cannot us. Well, deal with transformers the bar for of forever. Quality keeps getting pushed. You know, like forever. I mean, as we keep expanding technologically, and yeah. you know, we keep seeing better and better stuff on TV or written that it keeps pushing that bar. You know, yeah. the, the, the against which you hold everything. Yeah. Uh, right. Spider Man Homecoming though had. Um, you know, you were talking earlier about, like, I mean, uh, Logan being a movie that felt big but intimate at the same time. And I thought mm-hmm. Spider-Man Homecoming also had that because yeah, exactly. it had one of the most, I thought, interesting villains in yes, thank the you, Marvel Michael Keaton. movie. Yes. Because he's like... Um, he's a regular guy. He's... Trying to, he's but trying what, to is that, what does that mean? I mean, he's like the working class Joe who's kind of gone, you know, like he see the world is against this he's, guy. He's tired. He's tired of where the world's at. And you can relate to him. That's, yeah. that's the brilliant part of it. He's like, I'm going to seize this opportunity that I have. Yeah. But it, it's a life of crime. You know, I mean, yeah. he's basically gone. But it's like you can see his motivations. Yeah. As like trying to pr- pr- provide for his family, protect yeah. his family. Exactly. You know, it's like. Well, I can relate you to can that, see, but what you're right. doing is, you know, I mean, he has, I don't think he but it's, kills anybody necessarily, it's very, he, but he's he, he enabling legi- other people to kill people, right? Realistically, his, legitimately kills someone in broad daylight. Like he, did he? He's like, he, he didn't he, mean to. He legitimately, <laughs> kill, he, he legitimately didn't shoots to. someone and kills them uh, he in that movie. He oh, I remember to. that, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was uh, shit. I thought yeah. it, this was. You didn't the think so, but he gun. legitimately just shoots and kills yeah, someone. But right. he's 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 on par with um like the Walter White. He's not. I yeah. think so. You know I think what that's, I mean? Yeah, I think that's black the and white yes. villain. You no. Know? Yeah, he's he's and, not a bad guy. He's a bad guy. He, he's <laughs> a guy who has to do bad things yeah. to help his family has and keep to. him. Yeah. Everything's well, a choice. No, everything is a choice. And he does the bad one. He does. It's a man that's been pushed too far. Yeah. But I and mean, Michael they have Keaton. It, Michael <gasps> Keaton. Yes. Michael Keaton. So like, yes. this is the guy who played Batman at yes. one point, and then Birdman was the riff on that. And then and now he's to be on the other side Vulture, of this. Yeah. It's like, you know, this is an interesting, uh, you know. I mean, just, else, I like the him. arc of his career yeah. is yeah. a great. Thing I love to follow. Michael yeah. Keaton. There's rarely a we bad all love movie. Michael Keaton. He was okay. ten. Okay, for real days, it was like a couple weeks ago. I was watching Get Out. And Michael Keaton was watching it at the same time, and I kind of felt like we were on a date. <laughs> wow. Uh, he posted on Instagram. I was like, oh, we're both watching it. Kismet. Uh, right there. Uh, listeners, Boom. viewers, yeah. brailers, I will let you uh, I will let you take from that what you will. Yeah. I'm basically dating Michael Keaton. There you I go. think that's what it comes down to. I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, Michaela, what's number two? Michaela. Sean, you and I have been in a very similar wavelength through this whole top five. My Wait, number this is one, number one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah number one. Oh, number My one. number one is Get Out as well. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, I think this is the best horror movie I've seen in the past 10 years. I, there, I, man. this is an unparalleled theater experience for me. I have never been in a theater where people are more wrapped with attention for this movie. Um, or wanting a movie. Yeah. You know, just like, yeah. just like the desire was there. The, yeah. yeah. It, oh, so much. Uh, you know, this movie was wildly ambitious. Like, it's, Especially considering, you know, we had talked about within the past year, especially a lot in 2016, we were delivered trailers that showed us clips that were not in the movies. Um, Mm. Rogue One, looking at you. Rogue One. Um, But... uh, (laughs) Get out oh, you're same. talking about the deer. Uh, the deer yeah, skull was not in the movie, but it was uh, in the trailer. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. There, there, movie, there yeah. were there were scenes in get, in the Get the Out trailer deer. that were not in the movie. <laughs> but honestly, I think the movie is better for it not having those scenes in the movie right. because I don't want that magical realism in this movie. Get it, get get yeah. it the fuck, fuck out of here. Deer. Yeah. Don't keep it out of here. Um, Daniel Kalu is a great find. If you have not seen the five million merits episode of Black Mirror, go watch it. It will break your heart. It's incredible. You should probably just watch it's, whatever he's in. You know, but that I, I've seen I mean, of Black Mirror, that is one of the best episodes ever of Black Mirror. It's incredible. It's it, it's just great. Go watch it. And I can see why they saw that and thought, let's elevate him to this level. But I love where he got Black Panther. Yeah. 
Yeah, keep keep on, keep it on, man. I'm so excited, you know? Black Panther. Yeah, <laughs> look where we got. Yeah, just, I didn't mean that to sound. Uh, to sound. <laughs> I didn't mean this. Yeah. Maybe the sound he way, reached the way it's Marvel sound. level. Yeah. But I, him. that's as well. You know, in what? our I'll society, it's the highest you can go yeah. right well, now. Well, but, but maybe for his yes, career but, and for his paycheck, for his career, yeah, that is, yes. But yeah. maybe not as an actor. Right. Maybe that's yeah, that's yeah. not right. the best. That, place I guess that's what I meant. Right. Right. No. No. I get that. As far as paycheck goes, great. Great. Good job. Yeah. Don't. You're not going. Now you're going to have an action figure and you can sit back. Yeah. 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 But this movie is a masterclass in suspense. This is like the Hitchcockian level suspense. There is a scene in this movie where the tension like had me on the edge of my seat, and I was like, I was having a meltdown in the theater. And the only thing that's happening is like five characters are like standing in a room all staring at each other, and someone's saying, "Rose, give me the keys, give me the keys, oh, God, give me yeah. the keys," and, and just, like, and just see uh, a character who's been so calm throughout the entire movie lose to finally it. get to that point and lose it, and like, Rose, give me the fucking keys, yeah, and just the way he does it, yeah. and there, and Ugh. literally like Bradley Whitford and like the mom. I'm sorry, I don't know the actress's name. Uh, it's um, my, uh, it's uh, Catherine Keener. Catherine Keener. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, but they literally are. They're not even moving. They're just standing. They're staring. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's like five people in a room staring at each other, and it is the most tension filled thing I have seen in film in a long time. And the brother, who's it's also the, been on, the like, brother made me uncomfortable the entire movie. The brother's a point. Landry, yeah. and he's makes yeah. me uncomfortable. Caleb Landry, he does, he's but to. he's also very good. Yeah. He's also in Three Billboards. Yeah, which yeah, is another is. character yeah. I couldn't stop watching in Three Billboards. Yeah, he's doing very good work. Yeah, he's he's also an X Men and everything. The Last Exorcism, remember? Last Exorcism. He's an X Men. He was an X Men. Yeah. He's banshee. He's yeah, banshee. he does a lot of good stuff. He's a very good character actor. Yeah, and the, and, and yet, no, this movie gets. I honestly think this movie is better with a rewatch. Um, the tension mm-hmm. might kind of evaporate a little bit, but like, there's so many context clues along the way yeah. for what's going to happen. Um, like you notice that all the people in the party are wearing red. That like, there's a point in time where like. Um, you know, Daniel Kalu and his girlfriend are sitting next to each other and they like with their outfits they make like the American flag, which is really weird. <laughs> um, things like that happen all along the way with the movie that like I think this warrants many, many rewatches. Mm-hmm. And I just have never seen something so refreshing and smart. Um just so like raw and like visceral and like really bearing his soul. Like I felt like I kind of saw more of Jordan Peele than I wanted to see seeing this movie, you know, like it, he kind of put a lot out there mm-hmm. and it worked out for him, but that's not the case for everybody, but that puts themselves out there this yeah. much. And yeah, the ending I thought was going to go in a way that would have traumatized me for life. And it made the turn I wanted it to make, but you yeah. know, we all went, no. We all went, oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. We all did that. Yeah. In the um, yeah. And granted, you know, like some of the the white people actors are not the greatest in this movie. They're the doing. White people. Yeah. Actors. Like, they, I mean, they're, you know, that's what they're playing is white people, you yeah, know? Yeah. They're just generic white people, but like. Which I love. Yeah. 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 But um, TSA agent is great. Oh, yeah, TSA agent. God. He is so um, good. I, I honestly think he's. When he muse the phone, he's like. Yeah. I fucking knew it. And She's crazy. <laughs> I will so say, good. I do think Golden Globes calling this a comedy is an insult and taking this movie down a peg. Yeah, you know, I, you know, if they're doing it to give it a better shot at winning, that's one thing, but still not okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. It's Embrace ridiculous. The Embrace fucking horror. It exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. God damn don't it! Don't cheapen it. Don't yeah. do no, not yeah. fucking don't do cheapen it. this movie for. I what know it because is. that's what makes horror movies. Great cinema yeah. is their ability to, uh, you know, contextualize mm-hmm. exactly. social. You know, I mean, yes. And, and this say- is the best example of that. Yeah, this is the best fucking example yeah. of that. And to cheapen it is fucking insulting. And mm-hmm. Jordan Peele should be insulted. And I am glad for him for ta- speaking out against it. Yeah, you know, it more power to him. You know, um, I'm I, I pray to God. I won't take it that far. Uh, <laughs> like being I, the devout Christian that you are, uh, yeah, are you that, make us all really, join hands that really in prayer? felt like a, <laughs> yeah. ooh, that felt drastic there. Yeah. I sorry, the I didn't mean to go that the far. Clouds are no, forming. I like thing. and put what you want into award shows and what you think of them and all that stuff. But like, let's let's give it its due. Don't devalue it. 
Just don't. Just it, yeah. It is. It is like I think. Call it what it like is. Like we said, the Golden Globes. I, I think we got it wrong there. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's, Horror movies can be great fucking movies. That's they right. Can we be. fucking love movies. this genre. Yeah. Yes. It's because they are transcendent. They are. You know. Uh, they can talk about things that like fit well within the genre. Horror that, movies can do it better than dramas. Yes, yes do. they can. Yes, they, yes, they can. can. Time, and that's because you know what? Sometimes yeah. life is a fucking horror movie to some people. And you can't tell them that's wrong. You cannot tell them that's wrong. wrong. Exactly. You cannot devalue that into a comedy. You cannot fucking do that. And I think there are subjects that, like, you know, if you, you know, if you were, uh, I want to make a movie about, like, uh, a love story between a woman and a man who is dying of cancer. Like, oh, okay, I can watch Dying Young or I can watch The Fly, right? Sometimes you can take a concept and put it into a fantastical uh, situation where it is more compelling. Right. Yeah. You know, and you know, where the man is literally falling apart. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's like, and and what's going to make you feel more? Right. And the Golden Globes are in no position to tell Jordan Peele how he interprets that situation. So stop trying to do that by, you know, devaluing it into a comedy. However, that being said, I think this movie will outlive the Golden Globes and will stand the test of time. I think 20, 30 years from now, we will look back on this movie as like a Hitchcockian thriller and it will stand the test of time. And people will regret not giving the movie more credit at the time it came out. I really hope. I really feel like that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to live on. I I think it will, too. For sure. I mean, you'll say three titles in quick succession. Yep. I think forever it will be Stafford Wise, Rosemary's Baby, and, and Get Out. out. Oh, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, That's exactly what it is. Generationally, yeah. I think we get like yep. this is the next one. I feel so lucky to be a part of the theater experience and to just genuinely go watch this movie and accept it for what it is and to experience it in real time. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like so privileged to be a part of someone that got to experience this movie in real time. Um, because like, okay. Oh, uh, you didn't get to see mother. Well, like no, I mean like, but, like I'm <laughs> have you, seeing, have you seen it? I have not seen it yet, <laughs> oh, um, but like there, are like, I see a lot of people right now that are experiencing the room because of the disaster yeah. artist. And I could see the, Get out being a similar thing in the future, sure. that, but I'm I'm happy to be in on the ground floor, to be in on like I believed in this movie from when it was a Blumhouse movie, you know. Um, so this is my number one, Colin. What is your number one? Uh, my number one is also a Blumhouse movie. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Annabelle. Mm-hmm. No, but I don't Creation. know. <laughs> yeah, yes, Annabelle. David Sandberg lights oh, out to God Annabelle. Damn it. To yep. what's he doing next? It's some big ass movie. Probably. Yeah. I can't remember what it up. is, but it's uh, like really. Well, okay. Good luck with. Oh, I know what it is. Okay, go. What is it? You, no, you go ahead. No, tell me. No, you go ahead. No, no. no the, what? What? Oh, your what movie I'm picking. Is. Oh, yeah, okay. what your movie is. Sorry, I thought you knew David Sandberg's name. No, no. Um. All right, so uh, I think I don't know how. I'm hoping that I can talk around the spoilers of this, but like it, part of my experience with this movie has to deal with uh, the spoilers of it. So it, the movie's split. I told yeah. you. All right. I called it. I, called it. I am all like, for that. I'm as all far too, as like we the, all like it. I love that movie so much. That, like, it fell off the radar of the other three people. It's in my audience, top 10, but not my top five. Right, That's the thing. It's top 10 like, yeah, because top we 10. all really like this movie. Top 10. Yeah. But okay. So, I mean, for the spoiler conscious, uh, conscious of you out there, I want, but the reason that I like this movie so much is attached to, uh, Something else. <laughs> huh? A history? A history that I have with M. Night Shyamalan. I think so, there's, I think everyone has, good or bad, that most a people history have, yeah. with M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, although I wanted to test this, so I watched oh, okay. it again recently, and I'm like, okay, because I remember my experience with the, the film in the theater. Mm-hmm. Um, when M. Night Shyamalan debuted on the scene back in, what was it, like 2006? No, in 1999. It was... Uh, I was going to say, uh, it was earlier yeah. than that. It was 99. Yeah. It was... Stir- uh, not Stir of Echoes. God damn it. It was The Sixth Sense. Sense. Sixth Sense, and, yeah. Uh, Stir of Echoes is also a good movie. It's a good movie. We'll forget that. It's the one I like better than The Sixth Sense at the time. I do too, and yeah. I've since come around on, because it didn't work on me the right way. I saw the ending of Sixth Sense in, you know, before but the, the I The Sixth Sense revealed. was the movie. That was the But it was movie. the movie. It, yeah. And when you go back and look at that, it's like that is an expertly constructed movie. Expertly and it, constructed. And it has the hallmarks of um, at least maybe the next three Shyamalan movies and why he was such the hot shit at the time. Mm. Because Shyamalan 
like uh, you know some of the other folks we've talked about on this episode, um, understands the um, importance of character structure drama out on the writing end of it. He's also a director, and mm-hmm. I think this is what makes him uh, at least a double threat. Right? It's like you're an awesome writer. But you're also an awesome director. Like when he, you know, puts stuff together and the way he, you know, orchestrates his uh, suspense sequences yeah. and he's building in layers of meaning in, you know, like the way that he uses color coding or sound mm-hmm. effects or, his you know, he's one of those guys like Guillermo del Toro or, yeah. You know, he's top notch. Top he is notch. Top notch. One of our best working Sweet. directors. It really is. Who, unfortunately for him, went through. I mean, I guess, you know, you have to... Well, it was more than that, right? Well, I mean, it's it was more like a, a slump like that's his own fault. He yeah. just became a punchline. Burning line. down his own persona. Because he was yeah. on the edge of, you know, being the next... I don't know what, you know, Alfred Hitchcock, Steven Spielberg, you name it. And his a little bit hubris. About you. You're right? It, this it, is, it, it, it is hubris. It was Phoenix. It's hubris. Uh, it's hubris. St- you know, Icarus, yeah. right? He, yeah, flew he flew too close, too close to the sun, sun <laughs> and burned his on wings, wings off of and, made of Paul Giamatti yeah, and flew <laughs> off. Oh my god! <laughs> that was the that's one that did, did it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I think actually. Oh uh, yes, that's, that's so true, Sean. Oh my god! From a historical perspective, uh, <laughs> that was the Warner Brothers movie. He had already burned his bridges at uh, Universal. At no, it was Touchstone. It was a touch. Oh yeah, it was he did all his movies at Touchstone. And burned his bridges. And then went to Warner Brothers. They gave him Lady in the Water. And that was the one that, like, touched him and was like, fuck you, you asshole. You're, like, going around town saying whatever the fuck. And like, okay. And then after that comes uh, After Earth and The yeah. Last Airbender, which his apparently lost years, is yeah. his most uh, financially successful movie. Well, sure, but, but that's not built on him. That's built on The Last Airbender, I yeah. think. All right. So he makes the visit for Blumhouse, and that's a big hit. And I saw it, and I was not impressed. I got to tell well, you, we missed a movie in there. Uh, well, we missed a the, couple. The Happening? Yeah. The Happening. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like The Happening. You're not missing extent. anything with The to Happening. To an extent. Yeah. To an extent. It, to feels, an extent. it still feels like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. But um, I guess, you know, Split is a number of different things to me and this is why I'm choosing it as the 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 number my favorite movie of the year is because it's like it's M. Night Shyamalan doing a horror movie right I mean because it is horror the concept when you go into it it is hard horror yeah yeah Yeah. it's a a girl gets spoiler alert for everybody a girl gets her like Intestines eaten out. Well, in and not movie. before that, three, three girls, girls get abducted, abducted oh, in, the, in the cold yeah. open. Yeah. The yeah. general premise of the film is a horror. Film. There's a dance scene that's very horrifying. <laughs> there's a but lot of um, awesome. there's a lot of implied, but awesome, but very horrifying. Yeah, there's a lot of implied dread. child molestation. Yes, yes, a lot. It's also one of the greatest acted, uh, one of the greatest Unbelievable. roles that is unacknowledged. He'll never get an Oscar oh, and he James needs McAvoy. it. James oh my McAvoy. Because you know what I think fantastic. it is? I think uh I think like the Carla uh Gugino role in Gerald's Gugino. game, Gugino, it's like they see these as too showy. Right? Yeah. Probably, because it yeah. is, you know, he plays James McAvoy plays a guy with multiple personalities. Mm-hmm. What, and so 27? He, but I think he like only that. performs yeah. I mean there's one scene where he performs. But there's the like, video clip like where you see a bunch of them. Right. But, but, them. The, but the there's stuff this, that's more impressive to me is where he, he fades switches in and out, yes. between one personality and, and you another re- literally and has watch picked him. out yeah. these specific behaviors for yes. each one that he can yes. You know, just it's so terrifying. And I think a lot of people, because I've talked to people who are like, you know, like, well, this is acting one on one, basically, no, right? This they're, is, they're going it's through like, that. these are the different no. characters that you kind of make. But I'm like, it's believable. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's controlled in a way that is not like like <laughs> to say it's acting one on one is to say that like what like Tommy Wiseau like doing Brando is like acting one on one. You know what I'm saying? Like it's very like. Controlled in a way that is realistic. Exactly. Act, yeah. you know? Acting 101 is okay. Now walk like a model. Now walk yeah. like a cowboy. Yeah. This is he's literally sitting in a chair and his face changes into a different character. And, yeah. And you feel it. You yeah. feel and it. I think yes. That Shyamalan. 
the the camera work in this movie, he sticks with James McAvoy in the characters he is, where he he sticks with them long enough to allow you to believe that he is the character that he is at that point. Yeah, like but I you know love what, but watching you know what, that. You know what takes this to another level to me mm-hmm. is one of the characters is pretending to be another one yeah. to the psychologist. Yes. Yes. And that psychologist part, it's Betty Buckley from Bet- fucking yeah. Carrie, right? And she she's was great. The gym she's remarkable. Carrie. She's I'm remarkable. Like, where did Shyamalan get the idea to cast her? Because she's fantastic. Right? Well, he is a fan of her because she was in The Happening as well. Oh, shit. Was she? Yeah, she's the one, the woman at the end of the movie who puts her head through the window. Oh, oh fuck. God okay, well, I didn't know that. All right. Well, then he has... Okay. Well, because she's, she's at the end. Because she she uh, is part of the, some of the most uncomfortable scenes where, like, he Shaman will just put a camera on a character and have them, like, fucking point at the screen and yell at them. In because, the happening. In the happening, yes. Yeah. Because she's having a problem with that whole family being in her mm-hmm. room and everything. And it's... She... He does a thing where he it makes it very uncomfortable that they're in there with her and that she has a sort of mental problem in accordance with what is going on in the world at that point. Mm-hmm. Like it's woo, it's something else. Well, but he used her in that, but, and then I he brings mean, back in to, this. You know, I think, and because of her pedi- you know, as a pedigree or pedigree, her history well, yeah. with the genre you know it's like we revere because betty buckley didn't she wasn't she in the, the stage version of carrie also i'm not sure i, I think know. she played she um been. she played the mother she played the mother in the stage yes, version right. of the piper yeah. laurie part uh mrs white so um i think you've got at least two great performances betty buckley and james mcavoy mm-hmm. playing the, the 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 multiple personality mm-hmm. Uh, Anya Taylor Joy, who's in my, <laughs> Not too my shabby favorite herself, film yes. from last year, The Witch, uh, is in this, and um, she was also in uh, uh, what was the um, Ridley Scott's kids movie? Um, oh God, it was called. She was like an artificial grown in a laboratory, and oh, Kate Mara uh, was in it, and they had oh, her yeah, Morgan. She was Morgan, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I think next year she's going on to uh, Thoroughbreds. Another, yeah. Look for this movie, Night Shyamalan movie. I, I think, think it was so. called Glass. Glass is the new movie, but look for her if you want to go outside of the genre she work she does. Look for a movie called Thoroughbreds with her and um, Anton Yelkin. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is that out now? No, no, no. But it'll be out, I think, next year. Oh, okay. But it's going to be something special, I believe. Yeah. And it, it, and she's in the New Mutants, am I correct? The new... Because uh, everybody wants to graduate to an X-Men movie. Ooh, I, I don't know that. I think she might be. She, she might I'm be. Not. I'm not I would look for Thoroughbreds because it's it looks like it's going to be fucking good. Yeah. So I don't know if she's, if she's good. She seems to be playing the same character she was playing in The Witch in Split. Very but, similar. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's... it's um, from a directorial standpoint, I mean, I've been a fan. I think my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movies are probably his earliest ones, being uh, Sixth Sense and Unbreakable and um, maybe Signs. I, yeah. I love Signs. I'm not going to lie. I love Signs. Yeah. We did Pomeros, podcast, Pomeros, Pomeros children, Pomeros. 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 We all love Pomeros. Signs. It's Pomeros. 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 We all um, signs is yeah. uh, signs is great. Signs as the glasses the most clink on our table, thing that I think maybe gets dismissed because oh, it does. Mm-hmm. Thing, but it's one of the fucking yeah, best go back things and he's watch ever done. Because is, that's the thing. There's yeah, moments in M Night Shyamalan movies. I think where he, um, the village is also really good. The village, no, it, mm, the village. I'll fight you on that. Oh, uh, it's really good. But the village is pretty. Technic- well, that's right. It's, 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 it's very pretty. It's yeah. very pretty. And as a director, Shyamalan's quality, I think, is always uh, it's always near- top It's narratively, notch. I have the problem with that movie. That, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. It's, it's a story. Have a I have a problem. It's with. It. Twists that like, you're like, I'm not yes. with you on this, dude. Like this, you, the blind yeah. person's the only one that can yeah, find their way out. You've, really? you've destroyed okay. my uh, ability <laughs> but to technically suspend disbelief. Everything is so good. Are you kidding me? There's a moment in the village where... I mean, it's Joaquin Phoenix, so I'm going to love it. Well, that's very true. But Joaquin Phoenix, Bryce Dallas Hart, sitting on the porch, mm-hmm. talking about what they're talking about. If you don't mm-hmm. remember that scene, it's fucking great. Mm-hmm. Is that when he's I, talking about like he like on our wedding day we'll dance with you and there's yeah, a whole thing yeah. between them and it's just like it's fucking it's heartbreaking yeah no oh my god I'm gonna it's, <laughs> it's fucking heartbreaking don't it's have a moment right here right it's here. so uh, good all right my so, god about split I think <laughs> yeah. we yeah, that get movie. that 
uh, M. Night Shyamalan bag. The one that we've been yeah, missing we for so many I years. So. It's like, yeah. it's back. And I just it's remember. It's even shot in Philadelphia. It is. <laughs> you know, I was sitting there in the and theater. There's so many things that like occurred to me. Is that what uh, the problem was? He needed to come home. Yeah, that yeah. he was just shooting in Philadelphia. <laughs> he needed to come home. Maybe well, but after maybe Earth even was not the, shot in Philadelphia. Yeah, as Who far says as we know, the visit home. was. I mean, I don't know, but uh, um, I think uh, as a director, he's back. You know, where uh, we wanted him to be as a writer, we're back, and you know, it's like it was just this kind of coming home again with this movie because when I saw the trailer, I'm like, oh, okay, what? And you watch it, and it's this ratcheting of tension. And this ratcheting of suspense, and uh, you know, um, creating a reality to a fundamentally uh, supernatural idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know that he does. I think in when he's actually hitting it right, which I think he did in this movie. Yeah, he did. he's hitting it better than a lot of people do, and. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, I'm just going to use it as an example. We were talking about, like, superhero movies earlier and, like, how, you know, that that we need to ground them, you know. Um, this is, like, the base. Of, this is, like. The yeah, most grounded, yeah. This, yeah, this yeah is because the most grounded you can get in that. Example. I remember, I think I was talking to you guys. We were Probably. talking about the Fantastic talk Four. Don't lie. Right? The Fantastic Four sets up the, because the, I don't know why I keyed in on this movie, but. Fantastic Four, the the Miles Teller one was this yeah. movie yeah. that like it sets up all these characters and they all have uh, they felt realistic to me and they had uh, you know certain personality quirks and things that they had to do and then all of a sudden in the movie in like the middle of the movie it just felt like while I was watching it I was like all of a sudden there's this Victor Von Doom character like injected into the middle of this thing and it felt like. Why? Who the fuck cares about? Oh, because he's the villain, and you know, and then we have to go down this road and find out who Doctor Doom is, and all. And I'm like, you know how you'd fucking do this? You'd set the Fantastic Four up in their own movie, where they would have to deal with something that is between them, and then in a second movie, you'd deal completely 100 percent with Victor Von Doom, and at the end of that movie, in the third act, you'd interject. The Fantastic Four, but they're not the main characters. You know, uh, Doctor Doom's the main character mm -hmm. of his own movie because this is how you get into the psychology of these characters. And I'm like, this would be what I think I would want to see out of a comic book movie, but they'd never do it because with established, licensed comic book characters, you have to do things uh, according to the the dictate of the yeah. scripture, which yeah. is the comic, like Spider Man fights Doctor Octopus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, Batman has the Joker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like you have to have the diametrically opposed person in the movie. Um, but M Night Shyamalan, uh, you know, is kind of off spinning off like his own cinematic universe in the uh, way that like. We're tired of people making their own cinematic universes because everyone wants to make a cinematic universe out of everything nowadays. Oh, yeah. Like, it's that's the point. Awful. If we can get a franchise out of it and keep yep. it going forever and make money, we'll do it. But with this, with what he's, the ground he's established and where he's going with the characters he's created, I'm all for this, like, connected universe. And I don't want to turn anybody off by saying that, but he has connected it with... In a way that makes sense, though. In a way that makes sense, and that I'm looking forward to what he's going to oh, create, yeah. like going crazy. further. And yeah. I cannot describe the sensation I had with at the that end of this scene. movie. I stood up in the oh. theater and was like grabbing my scalp, like <laughs> but freaking I've never out, had, like I've so seen, much. I just, I go to the movies all the time. Marvel never did yeah. that. Uh, nothing, no, Marvel's never done that. Marvel to never me. did that. Has ever done that to me? Yeah. And I was like, just. I it was like an out of body experience where I fucking left the theater like texting people like you got to go see this right now and everybody's like yeah 
okay. And, and you're like, like no, 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 you, have you to don't get it, it yeah. right now. I and need to talk to you about it. Go see it. And then it. I had to shut my fucking mouth for like five months until the thing <laughs> Because came it was video. so plot twisty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there, there was parts of like split that made like my stomach drop into my butt in ways that like I am not like I don't I don't want to see those scenes again. But at the same time, I appreciate the way that they like made me feel. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like I appreciate they were able to do that to me because I consider myself someone that's very like desensitized. So the fact that they were yeah. able to make me do that, I was like, I appreciate that. But like yeah. the scene, like it's not giving anything away, but like Anya, Anya Taylor Joy is like in a locker and like she's mm. staring through the slots of the locker yeah. and like the camera's staring through the slots of the locker and you see James McAvoy probably like a good five or six feet back from the locker, mm-hmm. but he is lined up in a way so that you see just his eyes through the slit of the locker and he's talking, but his eyes look so angry and like to me, like just from a technical standpoint of like yeah. how they had to measure yeah. that up, yeah, yeah. and like, they, like I, I had nightmares filmmaker. about that yeah. scene. Like it's he so unsettling, so precise, yeah. precise. Yeah. And yeah. Also, like what you know about that character who's yeah. looking in at her at this point, because you know that is a very serious character, yeah, mm-hmm. and a very intense character. And he knows she's in there, but he stood that far away yeah. from the locker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he stood that far away because he knew she would see this much of his face yeah. by standing there. Like oh, mm-hmm. it just yeah, it makes my stomach drop into my butt just thinking yeah. about it you, you know, know what's like, you get it just... for me there's a scene and it's very near the end of the movie mm-hmm. and again we're gonna say spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen Split well, yet. Okay, oh you should so have seen Split spoilers this is 3, 2, one. Spoilers. 1 it's almost a year yeah, old at this for, point yeah, yeah. At this Split point. There's a point at this point where she says, uh, what is it, Kevin Wendell Crumb is yeah. his full name? Yeah. yeah. Where she's able to say his full name to get the, the base person mm-hmm. who has spawned all these personalities and he has, where she brings him forward and she's able to like talk to him and he's like, what, what's going on? What? It's, he like he thinks it's like four years for you at this point, yeah. Yeah. and it's just the point there's he looks at like there's a the shotgun locker, and, and, and there's a couple this. of yeah, <laughs> just like, kill me, yeah. kill me. God, that part just kill me. That because he knows the heckles on yeah. my neck that like knows raised knows at that point. Yeah. Done, yeah. yeah, he yeah. knows yeah. that yeah. whole part right there. The horde. It kills oh. me. It is the most yeah. heart wrenching thing, and I well, I will go on YouTube and just like find that scene mm-hmm. just to watch that because it's <laughs> Does so it feel like it, something. The feelings yeah. of yeah. that scene, I'm just like, oh Jesus, but when you he think knows. About it, it's like oh. you know, what we're talking about here. I mean, in uh, terms of you know, I mean, again, spoilers. I'm sorry, jump ahead about five minutes, yeah. right? Five or ten minutes. You should have watched. If you this haven't movie. seen, it's a, year, it's a year old at this point. Yeah, just I'm watch sorry. it. And yeah. I know the announcements of the uh, the. The, the Shyamalan's next movie is probably, you know, it's, it's wrapped over. finishing. It wrapped you filming at this know. point. But so. I mean, when we talk in terms of like the superhero genre, now I forgot my fucking point, but uh. it was along the lines <laughs> of um, Kevin Wendell Crumb. Does that trigger it? <laughs> no, it was building this David reality Dunn, uh, that like, uh, you know, the, the entire movie takes its time setting up like, and explaining it over, almost kind of over explaining yeah. like how this is physically real. So when right. we deal with, I mean, I guess this is what I'm saying about superhero movies. Basically, you're dealing with something that's on its face ridiculous, right? We're right. all adults. But how this is able to be shot three times with a <laughs> right? shotgun? We're yeah. All yeah. yeah. <laughs> the guy, of it. he starts climbing up the to walls. To change his physical. But, yeah. yeah. At that part, I was like, this movie better explain this shit, otherwise I'm out. Like, I almost was out at that point. Like, when he starts climbing up the wall, I was like, if but they don't back this up, I am out. I guess. Yeah, I was, like, because I, I wasn't felt, sure where the movie was going at that I point. I felt that they I had actually to to set that up to, like, within the reality of the movie. Uh, I was willing to believe it because there are so many scenes. There's at least four scenes. It feels like where Betty Buckley is like explaining uh, these. Uh, she's using these other psychiatric. Mm-hmm. Um, um, what are they called? Yeah, the full uh, potential of the mind. And yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yeah, but there's a name for Case whatever, uh, whatever. disassociative, yeah. uh, like DDM or whatever the um, you know, DID. DID. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, <laughs> cases which I assume are real cases that she's using that he's researched to back up like how this is like mm-hmm. you know possible within his fantastic world that by the time it actually happened I was like okay now how are you going to pull it off is he going to have like a affected computer adjusted voice is he going to have glowing green eyes or you know something and it was like really like low key mm-hmm. you know compared to what I expected you know it's like he's going to be all built up and you know and it was the monster version that, that was it but veins he's changed, and his but own it's like, physicality but structure. you're he's changing it's it's 
he keeps it low key to like he's changing his physical his physicalness to be able to I mean later on withstand like being yeah. shot with a, a shotgun r- three times the skin of a rhinoceros or yeah just it's like, not it's not like you know like he's flying around or no something. like Chronicle did this the Max Landis movie mm-hmm. that he wrote sorry uh, I'm not sure who directed it Josh yeah. Trank Dane Dehan Josh Trank Josh wrote. Trank did it yeah um oh, you know, you're seeing a bunch do... of trigger words for me right now <laughs> Dane Dehan sets me off into Star Wars yeah <laughs> Flying people. <laughs> he tried to do it from a more like uh, fantastical. Yeah. You know, these guys are just flying around, and you believe it because it's you know uh, first person perspective or whatever. But uh, it seemed like this one was more. I, I appreciated the way yeah. that it felt like it was more grounded. Yeah. Or however it was grounded worked for me. Yes. And I'm uh, like a hard. You know, I got a, a high bar. On that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's very so true. I'm like, ah, I like this. Am yeah. I Shyamalan? I yeah. To me, that's my my favorite movie of the year. F- just favorite movie going experience. bending bars and just like, yeah. he's not doing everything anything out of control or out of like, right. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, because it's not, it's not punching through down walls. Down yeah, it was that, just like bending bars. Of, yes. Yeah, it's like within like this small intimate yes. scale. Yeah, I think we were also talking it's about a small with, scope uh, like with Logan. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's why it works. Is like you don't have to have. It doesn't well, have to be world ending. It's even. Be, it doesn't have to be a sky portal. No, but I thought this when I saw uh, Shyamalan made an earlier movie called Unbreakable, which was about like a superhero type character. It's a great movie. And uh, I remember thinking there's a scene in that which takes place between two people in a bedroom where they're kind of uh, wrestling. And I'm like, in another movie, this would be them flying through the air and colliding in the sky. Guy yeah. and right. sparks breaking flying, buildings and, you know, and breaking steel. buildings. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like leveling this, the whole city. <laughs> this has this is him illustrating how you can have the exact same dramatic stakes in a bedroom. You know, it's yeah, brilliant. in a bedroom. In a bedroom. It's true. Yeah, in a for sure. Bedroom. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, so I'm sorry. Thank I went, you. I went on way too We long. appreciate M. Okay. Night Shyamalan. You went through some rough years, but we <laughs> we're glad you're back. Yeah, we're glad you're back. We appreciate. Glad, you're glad you're back. back. No that more, can... uh, God, what was that alien movie he did with Will Smith and Jane Smith? After Earth. After. No oh, more yeah, After yeah, Earth yeah. for is you. Is that the low point? Yes. There's that a Lady is, in the Water. That, no, uh, no. Uh, after uh, Earth is lower uh, than Lady Airbender. in the Water. I don't I never watched, Lady in the Water is pretty low. I, watched, you know I tried to watch it again like three months ago. Oh, Which so one? did I. It's Lady bad. It's bad. It it is offensively bad. Like it, it makes me angry. Do we work. consider Devil an M Night Shyamalan movie? Yes, it's produced by. It's yes. and he wrote it. It's a Night Chronicles movie, and he wrote it. It's fine. I, I feel. It's fine. I feel like it works better than an actual movie he directed. I I agree. Uh, I agree. Well, 100%. At that time, yeah. And it's like what, like seventy five minutes? It's really short. So yeah, it, like but that's it, what, you know, that's what that it clips to be. by. Yeah. yeah. Plus, there's some fucking actual. Suspense, S- suspense, yeah. and scary moments in that with the fucking for lady being comes all up. in an elevator. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. lady comes up in the black eye. And she's like, "Stop yeah. saying that." Yeah, I'm just yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Some generally disturbing moments in that movie. Yeah. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking I with think us. So. Wait, this we got to do worse of. We're That's running right. long. Yeah, but we'll we'll get there. Yeah, I don't we care. are going I, to I, tell I mean, you. I don't care that we're going long. Hopefully, you don't because we've made it interesting. I don't at this point. I don't give a shit. That's right. We're going to tell you. What we think individually is the oh, worst, Jesus. the worst <laughs> slash most I'm disappointing. disappointing. Yeah. Oh I'm shit, we're going worse. there. Well, then I know what you're talking. About. The <laughs> the worst. You don't know me, Colin. We've picked five good ones. We're gonna pick one bad one. This is the one that epitomizes uh, the worst film of the year. What are your choices? What are you choosing from? I don't know. Well, I will say that there I, were a lot of fucking bad movies. This there year. were, but I will say that. Um, I dodged a lot of them, though. That's what yeah, well, I, that, too, I no? agree. But I that's too. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking about that. I'm like, I, I dodged a lot. I avoided it. a lot of the movies. This that is probably, it. Be- and I think we're all. I didn't see a Geostorm. No, I, I think we're I didn't all see Transformers. Thing, like, we the know last what night. we'll think is the worst movie, and I think we all just decided not to see them this year. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. And, and I that's, think that's the thing. and that is exactly why I think we're all going to pick a disappointing movie. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick the worst movie. All right, I'm going to pick disappointing. For my disappointment this movie this year, I think it's going to be um, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. <laughs> Shocking! <laughs> I know. Last year, Shocking. Rogue One, uh, a Star Wars story. This what, year was Star it? Wars. And the year before was fucking. Uh, did we do this Independence the year Day? Before? 
No, that was me last year. Independence well, that, well, that was mine. Oh, Rogue One was mine. You were Rogue One I think one I agreed last year. very, very hard on yeah. your Independence Day one. But this year, I think it's Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Um, uh, I've come to a few conclusions with this movie. Um, uh, I don't think they make Star Wars movies for me anymore. Um, it's it was. Uh, I don't agree with the things they did in, in this movie. Did you like The Force Awakens or I did like The Force Awakens. Okay. I looking back at it, I think I We I, should I say like as a more. freak show, we are pretty much all on the same page with this movie. Like, and I like The Force Awakens. Like, oh, Last Jedi? Like yeah, yeah, like we all like liked things about The Force Awakens, but we all also like we had a group discussion about the about The Last Jedi and we all mm. disagreed about the same thing. Like I like we so. are very there's, much on the same page with this movie. There's some nice things about Last Jedi, but I There's a lot like, of bad too. There's a lot of bad, there's a lot of things I don't agree with. We yeah. also did yeah. Star yeah. Wars math where we figured out there's yeah. more Star Wars like, movies I think we more, don't like. Right. Then more Star Wars, like, Star Wars yeah. movies that are bad or I like you said we don't like. Yeah. Rather than what we do like. Um so I think uh, the last Jedi is the most disappointing movie of the year for me. I I've also come to the conclusion that I will uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I will wait. I, I don't. I, I really no. Don't. I feel the same way. I'm just tired of talking. I'm about tired it. of yeah. talking about it. I yeah. will wait Exhausted until the next movie. I want to see because I realized something is like I came to the original Star Wars, the first trilogy that I hold dear to my heart. Um, I like very much is that I came to that, but it was a complete trilogy. I had all three movies. I didn't have to wait for anything. Same here, yeah. I didn't. I didn't have to hold off on anything. Like I got them all at once, and I was able to experience it that way. Yeah. I'm not able to do this now with the current trilogy. I wasn't able to do it with the prequel trilogy. So it does kind mm. of alter your experience that you have with Star Wars movies. Um, I don't remember. Like I was. Around for the releases of the other ones. Yeah, I don't remember the vitriol uh, toward Empire that they're saying, they're saying now. That they yeah, I what do really? I, I thought everybody universally loved Empire. Like, Empire I thought that was. was I don't think. Yeah. That, I think it but was I afterwards. do. I do remember uh, bad reviews for, for Jedi for Jedi at the time. Understandable. Like, going like, Understandable. All right, this move. These yeah. series. The series has jumped the shark, and <laughs> mm -hmm. you know they didn't yeah. like it back then well yeah. and you know we had talked off mic briefly that like there are a, like a subsect of Star Wars fans that like if it does not make them feel the way they felt when they were eight and first watched the movies they're not gonna like it obviously that's not the case yeah. for any of us at the table I think, but I think that, you know yeah. there are there are fans out there that that is how they feel I think there's a happy you know? medium they could have achieved exactly they didn't and they did disappointed yeah. in it aggressively tried uh, they, not to, to go achieve. in the opposite they direction. They averted that. I, I, aggressively that's averted that. Like. They aggressively, <laughs> aggressively tried to not To the point of literally way. throwing a lightsaber away. They... Yeah, didn't I don't the denial Michaela, of I don't want to talk about this movie on purpose. You're saying yeah. things that make me want to comment on this. <laughs> he threw it over his shoulder like it was nothing. Uh, I feel it's, like it's pretty bad when Mark Hamill's like, I don't like what they did with my Oh, yeah. Mark, yeah, Mark yeah, Hamill. Yeah. Like, he was recently, telling us a he, year ago. Yeah. Mark Hamill's coming out and saying, I don't agree with the I way they took my agree. character. I did it because yeah. Ryan, that's what he wanted me to do. Yeah. But even Mark but Hamill's I don't going, agree I don't it. agree yeah. with those. And yeah. you know what? Maybe you should go with the character with the guy who's played the character for however many years. But whatever. Well, and apparparently, he tried to like try to sway them in the right direction, yeah. and they were not hearing it. And he no. said, well, I'm I'm tired of fighting it, basically. was I think so. Which I... I, I I don't put any fault on Mark Hamill for that. I don't That's either. not his responsibility. Ironically, this may be the best screen performance of Mark Hamill. It is Mark yeah. Hamill's yeah. career yeah. best yeah. performance. Yeah. It yeah. is because yeah. he's dedicated. Because he knew he was getting back into this character. He's yeah. like, I got to be dedicated yeah. to this. But you know what? I appreciate the fact that even though he didn't agree with the direction the character went, he still dedicated himself to he the did. role. Yeah. I gotta say, he that did. makes him a great actor. You yeah. know, like yeah. you don't agree with the way the character's going, but you but still give it a hundred percent. You know, yeah. that's a great actor. So he did that. Despite that, it is the most disappointing movie to me. I will see it because I have that movie pass. I will go see this movie again in theaters. Sean, just don't. Maybe I won't. I don't Just know. Don't. If I can find the time, because it all depends on like the yeah. week and like what's coming out next week. <laughs> and there's, there's some like movies. It, don't go see but, it uh, again. But also, I think there is something to say about seeing a movie for the first time and only time and having the expectations, having that blown away. And, and the then second time you see what the director right. intended. Exactly. And I think there's legitimacy to that. So I'm all for seeing it again. I might. I might not. I don't know if I have time. But... 
Star Wars The Last Jedi was the most disappointing movie for me, unfortunately, for this year. Um, again, hopefully, I'll wait for that last one of this trilogy and see if we can all make it come together. But uh, I don't have high hopes. I don't have any J- hopes. It's I have no hopes. JJ again, though. It is JJ, but I have I have no idea. I have yeah, no idea for the what, next one. Who gives a fuck what happens next? Yeah, I, the first really order like one. It. And the good guys lost. The but end. but you like the Force Awakens, right? No, but at the end of this one, <laughs> and JJ did the Force Awakens. So that's my logic there. Well, uh, yeah, that's but how I'm can... rationalizing it. The but only like... thing left that I what need to see is Ray fight Kylo Ren, and and uh, obvious, obviously, like they make it so like obviously the good guys are going to win. Obviously, you even have, though they're like, down to nothing in numbers, even though yeah. they're down to nothing, the good guys win. They do. If they did anything besides that. The good Deeply guys are going to win. Yeah. Right? Why like, would you keep spending money on it? What 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 what's going to happen next? The good guys are going to win. Like the, there's no way they're not going to do that. It's the last chapter of this trilogy and probably the last chapter of that saga that we're going to get from mm-hmm. those to here. What are you going to do that's going to surprise me at this point? Good guys are going to win and we're all going to be happy at the end. So I don't know. I I'm disappointed for <laughs> the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking Star Wars. They don't, they they're not making them for me, and maybe that's okay. I don't know. But I was disappointed in Star Wars. <laughs> Holly, what were you? What was your most disappointing movie this year? Um. Well, I I kind of understand your sentiments about not even wanting to talk about it anymore. Um, my most disappointing film of the year was Mother. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. that makes sense. That makes sense. Touche. That was your number three, was it? Touche. Yeah, it was number four. Your number four? I thought it was three. Three? Four? Three was Wind River. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, okay. All yeah. right. Here um, we go. Yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but... Because we could. Okay, we could. Um, <laughs> oh, that'd be exhausting. <laughs> Here, uh... Yeah, here's the thing. I think we were all in the same boat. Is that when we first saw a trailer for it, we were intrigued. Like we were all curious of uh, Darren Aronofsky, and it just it, it looked like something new and different. We were intrigued by it, so <laughs> I was looking forward to watching it. Um, Are you drinking my beer? But I, I I I fucking could not stomach that that movie. It was just. I mean, Colin said it, and he was right. It is a very pretentious movie. Um, I I can't even get on board. Like we, like I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of Requiem for a Dream, but I respect the hell out of that movie. Like what he did, it was, it, it was riveting. It's it's shocking. It's it's just a really hard watch, and that's why I don't like it. I'm just like I, I've seen it once, or I've seen it a couple times. Um, and it's, it's beautifully done, but it's just too much for me. And I, I just, I, it's not a movie that I want to sit down and watch. Um, but I do respect what yeah, he did with that. It's not an enjoyable movie to it's sit down and watch. It's not an enjoyable movie. It's not an enjoyable movie, but I do respect it. I can't say the same about Mother. Like, I see what he was doing. I, I understand where he was going, but I felt like he had multiple ideas that he was trying to put forth in this movie and they all just kind of collided together and it was just a hodgepodge of what is going on in his fucked up brain and I'm like sometimes you don't need to put that on your canvas like you don't need everything out at once you can just focus on one central idea but I feel like he just took every allegory and all the symbolism of what he was feeling about the world and about religion and just shoved it in our faces and I was like, it was just, it was too much. It was, oh God, it was so fucking annoying. I just, I, oh God, it was just so, I like, I can't even, I don't even have the words. <laughs> I don't even have the words. I can't even. I, it's, I was just angry after I saw this movie and it's not like the, it's not the gore or like well, it's not the like the the, 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 the violence the, yeah. the baby surfing yeah it's not the baby um, thing I don't, it's not the baby right. thing you know, it's not a horror movie but I think you have to be a horror movie to be able to a horror movie fan yeah. to be able to tolerate some of the imagery yeah a, 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 yeah in the movie. Cra- a I, crowd surfing baby a broken neck and then yeah. eating a baby I just I just felt like spoiler alert I just felt like it was all just. 
it was just shock value. And I was just, it just felt cheap. It felt really cheap. Was like, you know, if, if it's integral to the story, I understand, but it just felt like he was just trying to shock audiences. And that even came through with the trailer, the most shocking movie you'll see this year. And I'm like, you know what? It just felt kind of insulting. I don't know. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Mother. <laughs> uh, Michaela. Yeah. All right. Disappointing movie. My sure. most disappointing movie of the year was Alien Covenant. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. This movie had a lot of promise. It was uh, we, it was toted as the return to the you know greatness of the franchise for the Alien movies. <laughs> it was a return it's to, not, what, it's to what not. really Scott wanted it's, to return to. Um, mm-hmm. It's a return to David. Lots yeah. of David. Yeah, um, return to David. Sean, I will borrow from you because you had the most accurate David sentiment. Covenant. It is David Covenant. It is. Like, it is David <laughs> Covenant. It is David playing a flute for an extended amount of time with another David. And it's. Like I said, the relation of this to the new Blade Runner movie, like, we're. The, the, yeah. Why is he not just making why, Blade why, Runner? I don't know. Why not I just don't fucking know. make yeah. Blade Runner, Ridley Scott. Quite is, why? Oh my is, god. Ridley Scott has lost his interest in the alien. But it's weird so to stop see making him a- do alien shit the second time. Because huh? this is the first time he's done like face huggers. Yeah. And uh chest bursters mm-hmm. since the original alien. Yeah. yeah. And the CGI is absolutely fucking awful in this movie. It looks terrible. It looks like a bad video game and um, this movie is like watching two hours of like when you play a video game and the NPCs make every bad choice they could possibly make and you can't stop it. That's what this movie's like. They land on a planet and they don't wear any helmets. They do the we should split up cliche. They do every possible bad decision you could ever make. There is a literal. This planet will be better than the planet we studied for years and thought would be a great place well, to make a. Not only that, uh, the distress call was like a 1960s country song. Yeah, John Denver. Right, yeah. Why does everybody in the future. They have it in Prometheus, too. Why do they know 1970s. Uh, pop well, culture. and it's Numi Rapace's character that's sending out the distress signal, right? So why is she just not saying we're fucking stranded? Instead, she's sending out this like 1960s John Denver, yeah. John Denver song. But Idris yeah. Elba plays it, it, like uh, the one you're with on yes. this little fucking accordion. Yeah. It's or whatever so it right makes the... no fucking sense. It's yeah. so stupid. It makes me so mad. This movie was <laughs> dumb and it insulted my intelligence. Like, there's a part in this movie. Okay, James Franco is not in this movie. Do not believe that James <laughs> yes, Franco is in this movie. <laughs> James Franco is in the, to death. I saw it. Uh, he's in this movie in the form of B-roll footage from 127 Hours because there is literally a point Basically. where like like someone is watching on an iPad like footage of him and it's him climbing a mountain. I'm like, oh, that's mm-hmm. B-roll from 127 Hours that he sent into this movie. He's not in this movie. His scenes it, were all cut or something. Yeah, they were also in uh, previously released clips of him talking to the crew. Yeah, don't that care. It doesn't count. Nice Does not cut, count. Cut from well, I was the movie. Say, but like, doesn't count. We live in a world where like. What you want to do is on screen. Yeah, exactly. That's what matters. Yep. Don't yep. fuck whatever you release online or yep. like, oh, it's a prequel comic book. Like, nope, fuck doesn't you. count. No. Nope. Whatever the movie says, that's where we're at. Yep. No, nope. James Franco's not in this movie. He's not in it. He's not. And um, there's a point uh, where they like try to like memorialize the fact that he died because he was the captain of the ship. And they say he was a man of good taste. And then they proceed to pour a bottle of Jack Daniels. Because if you're a man of good taste, mid- middle yeah, shelf Jack, whiskey Jack is Daniels. is good taste yeah. apparently. So well, like, you know, give some Johnny Walker or something. Yeah, exactly. He's, a, he's the common man. He's got the voice of the common. So man. that's that to me. As soon as that happened <laughs> in the is first Ridley act, Scott, who like lives in an era, you know, in the the high, he lives the high life. Yeah, yeah. He lives the high life, like, yeah. the Miller high oh, life. Oh yeah, no, he lives oh, the Miller I mean, high life, like, the champagne of beers. He must have the champagne of beers. Lives on a vineyard probably somewhere. I think so. Yeah, he doesn't know what to the common people. He's he doesn't a, know what the common people do. Middle yeah. shelf whiskey Daniels. is the best, huh? Yeah. yeah. So, Danny Villeneuve created a fucking Johnny Walker <laughs> bottle for her fucking as soon 2049. As yeah. As soon as that, Well, especially because this is in the future. This is in the future, and they're pouring Jack Daniels out for James Jack Franco. Daniels is eternal, is yeah. what they're trying Appar- to say. Apparently, also, Jack Daniels is timeless. they're a very contributor for our budget for this movie. Yeah. Um, this... God, this movie is so fucking bad. Um... Yeah, they don't wear helmets. They wear flappy hats instead. You know, like the winter hats with the ear flaps. But they wear all those. And there's um, atmosphere and there's clouds and there's water. Like, why would like, we need to protect ourselves? The plot is paper thin. Danny McBride is really doing Fuck his you, best. Billy, up. But he's doing his best in a movie that doesn't fucking matter. So who cares? You know? Is this, it the worst alien movie? I think so. I, would I think watch it Prometheus. is. 
Yeah, I, honestly, oh, I yeah. enjoy Prometheus a lot well, more no, than I enjoy this thing, movie. Alien uh, Resurrection is pretty bad. I I would I rather watch. Alien I would rather watch any other Alien movie than this movie okay. because this movie, like the CGI, is bad. People are constantly slipping on blood and falling down. You're placating your audience by adding aliens. To well, this movie. to watch the extra features, which I, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I guess we all are talking about like Have beyond you? the movie. Yeah, I watch the extra features of this movie, and he, uh, Ridley Scott and his writer keep on talking about like you know the the characters uh, we were focused on the characters no, and right. we wrote these characters and the actors are all talking about they're the not well about, written though no they're, they're not, horribly they, written and we're talking about like i don't even Ridley know half their names is one of the a plus plus directors working today yeah. and to have him tell me that these are this is great writing at it, a character level, he's like, bullshit. He's you bullshit. Have no idea. Like this is no Taylor Sheridan. No, or no, no, uh, he's not. That's Craig Zoller. No, or no, no. I, I, I can. Or no, like I can maybe name uh, three characters in this movie. Maybe, Tennessee. maybe. Yeah, Daniels. Tennessee. Yeah, because and, and Franco and Walter. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's but it. He doesn't know humanity anymore. No, no, he doesn't. They are so far removed from. So far removed. There is an. Ex- there's the, there's an awful can, twin switcheroo. That is hor- that if you, can, you didn't see it coming, you can, my God. You can see it coming from uh, two and a half hours away. Uh, 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 I have a question for like, you, like Michaela. Like parent trap? Yeah. It's worse than that. <laughs> is is Life the better alien movie of 2017? I think so. I, I think so. I don't like Life, though. But, like, but Life is... Was it better than Alien Covenant? Life is more enjoyable, I think. It's not better, mm, but it's more enjoyable. sure. It's, it's more problems. enjoyable. It's more enjoyable, sure, Probably. Say. It's got more problems, but probably, yeah. Um... Yeah, Alien Covenant was fucking terrible, and like it was supposed to be a return to the franchise. I went and like my boyfriend and I's first date was Prometheus, so this was like a nice symmetry for us to like five years later to go see Alien Covenant, and then we went and we were like, "Wow, fuck this movie!" Like, <laughs> like Prometheus is so much better and so much more enjoyable compared to this movie, and this movie just like the action pieces are not even cool enough to make up for the rest of the movie. And there's an extended scene of David playing the flute with Walter where it's like... It's extended? Extended. Where he literally says, I'll do the fingering. Oh, no. That's that a line in this movie. movie. I'll do the fingering. You just do that. I'll do the fingering. Yeah. it's Yeah, but to the high-minded... Uh, is that what you call uh, playing? Probably, but yeah. it still is... To the really juvenile stuck. mind, it's yeah. hilarious. Well, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just, it's, but even still, that whole scene is not necessary in this movie at all. That's a it's cool just not effect. necessary. It's, but it's, 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 it's Michael Fassbender playing against himself. But it, who it, cares? It, no one's coming to see that. I'm coming to see aliens and chest bursters, and that's it. It distinguishes. I get what they're doing when they're trying to show the difference between you got Walter and David, where David yeah. is able to. Create Walter is even though Walter's a Walter is Deus Ex Machina is literally like is backpedaled and is yeah. like you can play it and you can learn it but you can't create something new out of it right. mm-hmm. and I like that dynamic that shit is fascinating that is That's why that I like, I like. well no I like I'm that sorry. about it and I hated like, the and alien that, aspect of it well but that's the thing the but it David shouldn't Walter be thing. the alien aspect of it I know it's a bad title don't call it alien right. covenant then. right don't call they it alien called it covenant. alien covenant because don't they have called fucking it aliens Prometheus. in it all you yeah. jackass yeah. Like, make the, Blade Runner that's what you really want that's what you want to do yeah Ridley Scott please just make Blade Runner stop making alien movies do it it's clearly it's obvious you you like cringed at the thought of xenomorphs being yeah, in this movie. He have you did. Left. He doesn't. He has nothing. He, he does no nothing interest left. in no. putting aliens yep. in a movie. And when he does put them in this movie, it's awful. It's perf- perfunctory. It's just yeah. and they look terrible. And boom, and we're yeah. gone, and we move on. Yeah, to he the doesn't want to. To the point that like there's so a don't do it. There's a part where where Daniel's character is like like looking at something, and one is literally hovering over her shoulder, waiting for her to turn around, and then attacks her. Like it's so terrible. Mm. This movie's so bad. It's not even fun. Fun. It's not even awesomely bad. It never crosses into that. I cannot even recommend this movie. Just don't give any fucking mon- money to Ridley Scott until he gets his shit together. You know, maybe all the money in the world give the maybe money to gets that. His shit together you know, that, yeah. yeah, but not not as far as the Alien franchise goes. Just I cannot yeah, recommend we should it. Stop no, that. yeah, we it needs to stop. It, this, I'm okay if it stops. I have the movies I want. Yeah, I'm exactly. It, the, I, I you don't know, need much anymore. like Star exactly. Wars. Yeah, yeah. yes, exactly. Anymore. I'm good. Yeah. All right, Colin. I don't need any more. Colin! All right, worst movie of the year. And I just saw The Dark Tower recently, and it's pretty oh, fucking no. bad. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I've avoided most of the bad movies this yeah, year. Yeah, well, I think we all have. We're just I like, think, we know what we'll think is bad, and so we're just not going to go see yeah, them. Yeah, but I saw Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. Why? What? I don't Why know, because I'm an it? idiot. 
Well, I fucking you might like be. the first one. And well, I'm like, I what? Mean, Vin sure. Diesel's comeback. It was terrible. And I well, saw yeah. rings. Why did it's you terrible. see rings? Oh, yeah. And that thing Why with would Ryan Phillips and Wish Upon. Oh, it's my terrible. God. So I have seen. And you are a glutton for punishment. You will yeah, just see but, anything that is labeled horror. But I didn't go see. No, I didn't go see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Name something, Colin. For some reason. Do it. All right, so my worst, worst movie, movie of the year. Disappointing worst. Which you're going based on it's disappointing. And uh, uh, you had a... a, a I hated Holly it. had a very... I hated it. Yeah, she hated <laughs> it on... But it was Primal a level. technically, I think, well-made movie. Uh, Michaela hated Alien Covenant, but I'm like... Yeah, the production design and the the, uh, the obviously the, the production design of a Ridley Scott movie is going to be fantastic. Right. Look at I, any movie I, he's I made. I propose to you that the movie that I'm going to suggest has the worst pr- production design, uh, terrible editing, uh, ex- writing. I, well, I use that term. I, I was trying to stifle a laugh because this uh, came the, out this year. Yeah, yeah, and it's called Resident Evil: The Final Chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Fair enough. I've not watched it, so this, I can't well, comment. Okay. This feels like a like well duh. Well this duh. This feels like a well duh movie. Well duh. Colin. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Why? But I feel uh, like duh. you know when you're reaching down there, uh, like yes, I was colossally this disappointed. This makes me feel like you're less smart than I thought you were. Yeah, this is true because <laughs> the Resident Evil movies, I will acknowledge, uh, are guilty pleasure. Okay, well, I own yeah, them they, all. Sure, Stop sure. judging you do. me. You yes. do. I know. Why? I don't know. They're no, terrible. No, as long as you label a, a guilty pleasure, you get a pass. Yeah, but I didn't really get any guilty? pleasure by, no, through this say, one. Guilty, like, no I haven't pleasure. gotten any pleasure of this since uh, I saw Resident Evil Afterlife, which is at least, I think it's three movies. Ago. Whatever one had Nemesis. It was in 3D. In which one had Nemesis? That was the it. second one. That was the, the. I think that's the best one. That's the last the one I saw, movie. and I'm just like, That is that's the horror good. movie, Resident Evil right. movie. I'm okay um, with that one. And then then after that, the third one's the one in the desert in Las Vegas. Oh, fine. No, I was done. That's messed up. Then the no. fourth one's the one in 3D, which was like, at least it was in 3D. No one's seen these movies, Colin. No, the fourth one was a huge box office. No, I'm talking about anybody yeah, at this no, table has seen these no, movies. No, all right. no, well, no. you are all uh, smarter than I am. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, because this is, I mean, I get that Mila Jovovich is you know putting your daughter through school or something i don't know <laughs> you know because she's gambling debts or something you know yeah, but it has to be you know these <laughs> oh both, my god there was uh resident evil is put on by i think it's revolution studios who also i believe funds the underworld movies so you've uh, got course. millie Ovovich where's the crossover and kate beckinsdale this is what I've been waiting for my entire <laughs> life, Sean, is the Underworld uh, Resident <laughs> Evil crossover. Underworld had a movie out this year. It was called Blood Wars, yeah. which I watched right after seeing Resident Evil, and it was like watching Shakespeare compared <laughs> to Resident <laughs> Evil, the final chapter. Oh my God. A movie that I defy any person listening to this to tell me what the fuck it was about or to find a coherent plot line. Or a character who mattered beyond. I'm like, I don't even know, because the by now, by now we're in a situation where the the mythology is like, what is it, six six movies deep, something yeah. like that, <laughs> where it's all trying to connect back on itself and and relate back to yeah. the first movie, and it's like your brain can't handle it because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. No. And uh, Paul yeah. W S Anderson has yeah. made a cottage industry out of this. He's married. I was, I was to putting Millie his wife in this. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. So it's sure. A- but uh, uh, this is why it has. It's a Rob this, Zombie situation, and why it has a relationship to the Underworld movies because uh, Len Weisman, Len Weisman and was his married wife. to Kate Beckinsale yeah. for a while. Um, Are they divorced? I think so. Uh, but I may be wrong. It would make but, sense after you know, like when you watch Underworld. Yeah, if you put me in these movies again, I'm gonna. The Underworld you. movies are not good, and the 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 no. one before this is really terrible. And it might if it came out the same year as Resident Evil: The Final Chapter, uh, we're on like pretty equal footing for the worst <laughs> fucking piece yeah. of shit that it I've feels seen like the last this year. Last yeah. breath of these movies. But this latest Underworld was like, well, you got a good. You know, the director's okay, and, like, these actors are, like, you know, the, when you have British actors doing, like, awful well, shit, helps. but they sell it, dude. You believe them. You're like, wow, I almost believe that, even though this is the worst stuff I've ever heard, you know? 
Uh, but you don't have that when you have American actors. Uh, no, we also Mila like Jovovich shit. and uh, what's her name? Um, Michelle Claire. Rodriguez. Oh, her name is Claire. In the, in the, is Allie Mila, Larder. Is Allie Mila, Larder. Sorry, yeah, she's Mila Claire. Jovovich American? She's Claire Redfield. Yeah. Where's she from? I don't French? think Mila, I don't think Mila Jovovich is Italian. Is American. Oh, right. You're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> They're American made films. She comes from anyway, country, this yeah. is a, it's a terrible, 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 terrible movie. This came out this year. And uh, Game of Thrones star. Um, oh, God. In Glenn. Uh, in Glenn is in it. Thank you very much. Who's I was going to say Jason Isaacs. Sir Isaac. Jorah. Sir Jorah Mormon oh. is in it. He's been in three of them now, I think. Uh, he's is in he? It. Oh, yeah. Resident oh. Evil. He's like one of the, the dudes. I didn't uh, know. That makes me more interested to see the movies, but I don't, I'll never see Sean, them. No. Do not see this movie. Well, it's terrible he was on a them. narrative uh, character. It's always fun to see. Uh, it's noisy. Game of Thrones actors in something else. I always think that the Transformers movies may be the epitome of terrible. Like the movie that Usually I keep referencing. I was like, the, we know how you feel about Transformers. That's right. Yeah. I didn't see the last night. I'm over it. I'm done. I'm not going to go see the Transformers. <laughs> I was done after the second movie. But me, dumbass that I am, have seen at least you are. six Resident Evil movies. And thank God. That have nothing to do with the games that you like. That's true. I heard they're giving it over to James Wan and they're going to reboot That's not going to help it. Stop putting everything on James Stop. Wan. Stop making it his responsibility. Stop it James Wan no, to re- yeah, yeah. What do you think? Is he at least knows what horror is? Yes, I don't know. I feel like Anderson. we're spreading him thin but right Paul now. Anderson right. There's only so much he can give. Yeah, he cannot Anderson's save everybody. Do these things. He's gonna like. We're gonna get to a point where he's just in his own bubble and he's not gonna know what these things are. Paul Anderson made action sci-fi movies is out of Resident Evil. So <laughs> is I mean, saving yeah. horror but he didn't like. He didn't make Resident Evil. Evil movies, though. None of those well, movies are Resident I, yeah, Evil no, movies. None of them feel like none Resident them. Evil. They they borrow bits and pieces, but sure. the last one that that borrowed something that felt relevant was the Afterlife, which borrowed from Resident Evil 5, and they really haven't taken anything from the subsequent games, so uh, that's the worst. The worst movie. The worst, worst movie that I've seen this year. Resident Evil. Damn. The final chapter. Thank you, Colin. It's, thank, that's fair. Thank God that's it fair. was the final chapter. Yeah. So we'll have to do this I'm next year. Most I don't want to do this next year, Colin. Yeah, I know. Neither do I. I'm I don't want to see Evil it, movies. but I'm probably going to see something equally shitty. Of um, course we will, because that's what they do. Well, listener, I know we're we're running long, but I'm glad that you've stuck with us this entire For three hours. Oh, thanks. For three hours <laughs> and 18 For minutes. Eight as we hours. We have talked it. about. The best and the worst movies of 2007. I think we got by with under two hours. We only had three people last year. We Michaela, did. Michaela, yeah. what? You weren't here. No, I you was not here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. Not, I, was say, yeah. I think we've reached a full year of Michaela. Yes. That's right. Okay. Welcome. Yay. Thank Yay. you. Yay. That's right. Yes. Bravo. That's right. It's been a great year. Yes, it has. Fire. It's, it's, been been it's been a great year. It's been a good year. You're done. That's how you cap it off. <laughs> so then you're fired. Yeah. Um, then you get someone new and... Uh, so next, back I see how it is. <laughs> so next week, oh shit, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. How are we ringing in the new year? Ooh. Decide right now, 2018. What's going to start it off? Make it a good pick. Cemetery oh. Man. Cemetery, Cemetery Man. Man. Cemetery Man. Shut up. The Italian oh film with Rupert Everett. Everett. Cemetery Man. Yeah. That's uh, how we're going to do it. If you're overseas, good or bad, that's what we're going to see. If you're overseas, it's Della Morte. De, no, Della Morte. Della Morte. Della Morte. Della Morte. Yep. Yep. That's sure. next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, thank you very much for listening, by the way. Thank oh you. Oh, my God. Happy yeah. New Year. Happy Appreciate New it. Year. Happy, New Happy New Year. Year. Merry New Christmas. Year. See you next year. Love you. Goodbye. And the basement <laughs> is going dark.